Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto reincarnated as son of Zeus and become the young god. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story, I love you, Hera. His hands roamed her shapely curves as his lips delicately touched her ear, making her shiver in delight. Every one of her moans sent sparks of shock down his spine, making him yearn for more. Her warm breath on his neck, her delicate grip around his chest, her long and shapely legs around his waist, and her euphoric warmth around his length, all were his addictions. Even after so many eons together, Hera was still the only woman who could make him feel so exhilarated. She was perfect. From her luscious blonde hair, to her powerful golden eyes, from her beckoning pink lips, to her soft and warm cheek, from her bodacious breasts, to her inviting womanhood, she was perfect. Hera gently kissed his ear and whispered, I love you too, Zeus. No matter how often or frequent she told him those three words the genuine affection and love behind them would never falter or weaken. For eons, the goddess of familial love, marriage, motherhood, and women had loved him. There were moments when their love of each other had nearly brought about the end of the world, but regardless, their love remained. No matter how many times his own pathetic urges would take over him. No matter how many times he had betrayed her love for him, no matter how many times he had taken advantage of her faithfulness, she still loved him. The guilt was overwhelming. Every single time Zeus would hear Hera whisper those three words to him a nearly unsurmountable pressure of guilt would be placed on his shoulders, as if he was holding up the sky. It would re pee his heart apart and fill his soul with unbelievable anger. Anger directed at himself. For the rest of his existence he would remember vividly the expression on his wife's face the moment she would f. I'm a demigod child of his in the mortal world. The hurt of betrayal and heartbreak his darling wife would give him every single time he failed to prove his love for her. Zeus wrapped his arms around Hera as he continued to thrust into her, trying his all to give her the satisfaction she deserved more than any woman living. He wanted to make her forget about all his other children and women, Forge. T about all the times he had betrayed her. He wanted to start anew with her, his wife, his other half. Zeus Tilda. Hera's own climax met with her husband's, causing her to cry out in ecstasy. The king of, the gods wrapped his arms around his wife and pulled her close, hugging her to his chest. His breathing was starting to level out, but his heart was still in turmoil. All he could do at the moment was, hold Hera close to him and try to silently convey that he loved her. That was amazing, Hera whispered with a sweet smile before she kissed her husband gently on his lips. It was the sacred month of June. And Hera had taken her annual scared bath in order to regain her virginity. She had once again given her husband her maidenhood. It had been so many times she had forgotten how many times he took her first. Despite all, she was proud that she and Zeus shared such a bond. No other couple in existence had such a tradition and record. Hera smiled as she lay on top of her husband's chest, we're going to have tea. She was swiftly cut off as Zeus kissed her hard on the lips, leaning his body upwards until he was sitting upright on their bed. She was a little shocked at the ferocity of the kiss. It had been a very long time since her husband had kissed her so fiercely. It was so intense. Hera found herself moaning into the kiss and wrapped her arms around Zeus' neck to pull him closer. I love you, he mumbled against her lips. Hera was pushed onto her back as Zeus climbed on top of her, his length growing inside of her again. She moaned blissfully as she felt her husband slide in and out of her. It was a little shocking to see Zeus acting so passionate, it was almost like all those eons ago when they were newlyweds. It made her happy, being so wanted and lusted by her husband made her feel good. Hera nibbled on Zeus' earlobe and whispered, I love you, too. Zeus stared down at his wife with his piercing blue eyes, filled with much more love and affection that they usually would. Hera was even more shocked at his gaze. She had forgotten the last time he looked at her in such a way. He lightly laced his fingers with hers and lightly kissed his way from her jawline to her lips, reveling in her heavenly taste. I love that look on your face, he whispered huskily. You look happy like that. Zeus wanted Hera to only look happy, not scared, angry, or depressed, and only happy. 
he would always remember how angry she would look when she would find one of his demigod children, that horrified and betrayed expression. He hated that look, but the expression that would how. N.T. his mind would be how scared and depressed Hera looked when he had chained her above the abyss, threatening to banish her to the infinity of chaos. Whenever he would think about those days he would feel a stab of pain in his heart. He kissed his wife again as he frowned, I want you to be happy, Hera. Zeus, Hera began, growing concerned at how strange her husband was acting. What's going on? He gave her a soft smile and nuzzled against her neck, I'm so sorry, my love. After eons, Zeus finally felt ready so say the words he had wanted to say. I'm sorry for betraying you, for betraying your love for me in our marriage. So many times, Hera's eyes widened as and wrapped her arms around his waist by reflex. Please know that no matter what happens, no one will ever replace you, you will always be the only one I love so much. I know that it's just empty words and you have every right to feel skeptical, but it's the truth. Hera was more shocked than touched, but she stared into his eyes with welling tears as he gazed down upon her, are really. I, I don't ever want to lose you. For the first time in eons, Zeus allowed a hint of fear to pass through his eyes. I don't know what would happen to me, how it would change me, if you left me. I would probably go insane and destroy everything in sight. I will never leave you, Zeus, she replied, placing a warm and comforting hand on his cheek, you know that. He reached up and gently held her hand against his cheek with a smile, I promise, from now on you will be the only woman I will make love to. He leaned down to kiss her softly on the lips, ignoring her surprise, you will be the only woman I will ever kiss, ever hold, ever love like this. Hera's breath hitched as her heart threatened to beat out of her chest. She focused her whole being into listening to his words, wondering if he would finally say it. You're my wife, my queen, my other half. Zeus pressed his forehead against his wife's and stared into her eyes. I, Zeus, lord of the sky, god of honor, justice and lightning, and king of Olympus, do swear on the river Styx that I will never be unfaithful to my wife, Hera, goddess of marriage, home, and family, the queen of Olympus. From this moment on, she will be the only woman I will ever love. Chaos and order strike me down if I ever break this vow. The tears were now flowing freely from Hera's eyes and she shakily cupped her husband's face. Z Zeus, you don't have to say anything. Zeus smiled, feeling mountains lighter than before. I should have said these words the day we married. Sorry for being millennia late. Hera sobbed and pulled Zeus down, holding him as close to her as possible. I I love you and I love you, only you. Zeus, I hate you. Olympus shook as the queen of the gods flared her overwhelming power. Waves of golden light blasted from the Zeus temple, creating panic among the lesser gods. Her cries echoed through almost every hallway and her power was growing by the second. Throughout the gods, rain, this had happened four times, but the last three times had been eons ago. For the first time in a long time, Hera was giving birth to a child. Hera, my love, please calm down. Zeus paled at the sight of his wife glaring at him in her true godly form, her power growing to the point where he began to feel weak. You're almost there, just a few more minutes. Zeus started to edge away, feeling the fear at full blast. Please, calm down. Hera growled and grabbed her husband's hand before he could back away further, almost crushing his godly bones. Don't you dare sneak away, sister. Zeus is right. Please calm down. Hestia held onto her sister's other hand and gently patted her shoulder, her eyes shimmering with warmth and love. We can see the child's head. This is almost over. Unlike other goddesses, Hera would carry all her children for nine months and suffer through a painful delivery. Because she was the goddess of motherhood, she had to suffer just as her people would have to. It represented the sacredness of motherly love and the embodiment of the sacrifice every mother would go through for her child. Don't worry, Hera, mother I. S here and she'll make sure the baby is fine. Zeus' words actually managed to calm his wife a little, not so much because of his tone, but the fact that he pointed out that their mother was present. Mother Rhea, the titaness of childbirth, was perhaps the only other being in existence that was better skilled than Hera in delivering a child. If there was one thing Hera was sure of, it would be th. At Rhea would never let a grandchild of hers perish on the birthing bed. 
Rhea knelt between Hera's legs and calmly handled the situation. Push, Hera, you're almost there. Zeus watched as his wife's face scrunch up in pain. Mother, how much longer? The head is already out. Rhea looked up and stared at her baby girl. You can do it, my daughter. It seemed as if an eternity had passed before Zeus finally heard the sound of crying. A toddler crying. He let out a breath he didn't realize he was holding and smiled down at his exhausted wife. Even the great goddess Hera felt powerless after giving birth to their youngest child. Perhaps even more so than when she had Ares. Relieved, Zeus sighed and kissed Hera softly, resting his forehead against hers. Thank you, my love. Rhea wrapped a G. Olden towel around the newborn and smiled down at it. It's a boy, she said as Hestia smiled at the sight of the baby, a beautiful little baby boy. Mother, whispered Hera weakly, let me see him. Rhea gently handed the crying bundle to her daughter, and she smiled when she saw Hera's eyes light up. Zeus and Hera stared at their newborn child and just smiled. He was perfect. Thin tresses of bee, blonde hair could already be seen a trait he had clearly inherited from his mother and grandmother, and a pair of electric blue eyes stared back at his parents. He was crying loudly and held his tiny hands into fists, but with only one gentle kiss on the forehead from his mother, he stopped and looked up at her mother with his big round eyes. Rhea knew, from that moment on, Hera would love that. Small little baby until the moment she fades. He looks like you, Hera whispered to her husband, who nodded with a smile. He really does. Rhea smiled and nodded along. The boy looked almost exactly as Zeus did when he was a baby. He's going to grow up to be a fine god. Congratulations, sister. Hestia smiled and kissed her younger sister's head, happy for her and her little boy. He's beautiful. Thank you. Hera whispered as she looked up at her sister, tears welling in her eyes. Zeus gently ran his hand over his son's nearly bald head and felt the fatherly love he had for the small bundle. Something he hadn't felt in a very long time. We still have to give him a name. The king turned to his mother and smiled. Can you give him a name, mother? Rhea smiled and gently patted her grandson's head. This little guy represents the dawn of a new era, the rebirth of your marriage to each other, so let's give him an original name. For the past century, Rhea had been exploring the wonders of Eastern civilization. And with her experience she thought of the perfect name. Naruto. Maelstrom. To mark the start of a new age for Western civilization, we give our newest god a name that will stun the entire world, Eastern and Western, and he will watch over them all. Hera smiled and tearfully pressed her cheek to her son's head, our little maelstrom. Zeus gently tickled his son's chin with a finger and chuckled when Naruto grabbed hold of it. Welcome to the family, Naruto. Welcome to Olympus. Ever since the fall of the Titans and the dawn of the Olympians, Mount Olympus had been the epicenter of the world. No matter where Western civilization shifted, Olympus correspondingly moved along, not following, but leading. From Greece, to Rome, to Germany, to Great Britain. And finally to the United States of America, it had been paramount in regards the prosperity of mankind. With the countless involuntary and oblivious offerings to the gods by humanity, the immortals W watched over their domains with benevolence, most of the time. From the heights of Mount Olympus, the gods reigned superior and celestial, vastly more glorious and eternal than their lowly creations. For millennia, the gods had made countless decisions that shaped the course of human history, and all had been done inside the council chamber, the room with twelve thrones for the twelve Olympians. From Zeus to Dionysus, or from Hera to Athena, many orders and demands had been ironed inside the chamber. Cries of anger, calls for blood, and bellows of fury had all been common inside such an important chamber of the gods. But rarely had lullabies been heard. Hum tilde hum tilde, Zeus smiled as he watched his wife hum the same tune Mother Rhea had sung for him all those eons ago. He could still ream, mber his childhood home in ancient Greece with Mother Rhea taking care of him every day. It felt so distant, but he would never forget how loving and caring his mother had been for him and he could owe. NLY hoped that his son would experience the same thing. He had faith that Hera would be no less of a mother than Rhea, especially since she loved Naruto more than anything. Bababa, ba 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 boo ba, bab, led the baby god as he clapped his pudgy hands together. Hera giggled and kissed her baby boy's forehead, you are so cute. 
Little Naruto giggled back at his mother with the beautiful blue eyes that he shared with his father and grabbed hold on her finger, aren't you, my little Naruto Tilda? Hera laughed along with her baby and looked over at her husband, he really looks like you when he laughs. Well, you'd be the only one to know that. Zeus stood from his throne and stepped over to the one on his left, Hera's throne. I'd sooner fade than let the others see how I laugh. Hera smirked, oh, please. Athena and Artemis had heard you laugh countless times, you're a big marshmallow when it comes to them. They're my little girls. The king smiled and crossed his arms, I don't mind if they know, just not the boys. Order and chaos know that Apollo and Hermes will annoy me about it. Hera smiled at her husband, who had become much more cheerful and optimistic lately, and kissed his cheek. Come, hold your son. Zeus' smile was as bright as Apollo's when he held his baby boy in his arms. Naruto giggled as his father's beard tickled his face and tugged on it roughly, making the king of the gods cringe, his son was already strong. It was surprising for Zeus that he felt such strong paternal love for his son, when Ares and Hephaestus were born, he had only been annoyed and disappointed. His opinion of Hephaestus had improved drastically over the years, but Ares had always been a disappointment, and now his feelings for Naruto gave him hope. Perhaps he and Hera could finally have a son who could handle being the official prince of Olympus, a god sired by Zeus and Hera, the king and queen of Olympus. So have you spoken with the four winds yet? Zeus nodded without looking away from his son's clapping hands, yes. They were fine with the idea. Aeolus will definitely be angry since he's been expecting to be promoted to godhood for many years, but he should understand that our son outclasses him. The king lifted his son and held him proudly at arm's length. I'm sure Naruto will be a great god of the four winds. The baby continued to babble on and started to suck on his thumb. Staring at his dad with all the innocence of the world, along with complete control over violent sky storms, he will be one of the most powerful gods on Olympus. Hera smiled and rubbed her son's soft golden tresses. Those are good domains, well suited for our little boy. She tried to imagine her youngest son all grown up and strong. Naruto, the god of violent sky storms and the commander of the four winds. And if he's anything like the other boys, I'm sure he'd be excited about his powers. I like having him like this, whispered Hera as she just stared lovingly at her son, I don't want him to grow up too fast. I want him to enjoy his time as a child. She took Naruto from Zeus' arms and held him closely to her chest, smiling as Naruto giggled up at her. I want him to be our baby a little while longer. Zeus grabbed his wife's hand and squeezed tenderly, by all accounts, his childhood will be better than mine and far better than yours. Hera scoffed, that's not very hard to do. At that moment, the council chamber's tall golden double doors were pushed open by the guards and a bright light blasted into the room. Zeus sighed and shook his head as Hera gave a small smile. Both already expecting something of the sort to happen. It was just like the god of the sun to do something like this. Lil, bro, cried the strongest son of Zeus loudly. Apollo, dressed in a simple California beach t-shirt under a white hoodie and a pair of beach shorts, manifested in a ball of sunlight and ran over to his father's and stepmother's thrones. He usually wouldn't be too poo, inctual to most council meetings. They were too boring, like the winter, but this time he showed up early. It wasn't every day his father would have a new immortal child, and Apollo couldn't wait to meet his new awesome little brother. Zeus gave his sunny son a stern stare, Apollo, not so loud. Sorry, dad, replied the god of the sun as he jumped to a halt in front of his father, but I'm excited to meet my little brother. Hera smiled and held the curious and wide-eyed Naruto higher so he could see his bright brother, it's already so much better than last time since this one didn't steal my stuff. Hera stood from her throne with Naruto in her arms, do you want to hold him, Apollo? Yes, please. Naruto giggled loudly as he met his older brother for the first time. Apollo looked very happy and friendly. His golden hair was not unlike Naruto's and they had the same blue eyes, a beautiful blue they both inherited from their father. The baby felt warm in the arms of the sun god A. Nd reached up to pat his face with his pudgy hands. I can already tell that he and I are going to be close. The all-seeing god smiled at his father, good job dad. Zeus sighed again, have you been drinking too much coffee again? Of course not, I am simply high on life. 
Apollo grinned as he bounced his brother lightly in his arms and made weird faces at him, it's been such a long time since. We've had a baby in the family and they're just so awesome to play with. Hera gave her stepson a look, you have plenty of babies yourself. Yeah, but they're all down in the human world and it's a little bit weird to see their mothers again, said the god as he shivered at the thought of one of his past lovers glaring at him for leaving, and they aren't immortal, which makes things so much more complicated. Maybe you should find a nice immortal wife and have an immortal baby. Zeus smirked as Apollo grinned sheepishly, sorry Lady Hera, but I'm enjoying my freedom. Hera and Leto had, both, not together, tried to convince the flashy sun god of find a wife. Leto wanted him to marry because she wanted grandchildren that would live longer than a century and Artemis would never give her any. And Hera wanted to see everyone married, including her stepchildren. Hera crossed her arms and pursed her lips, well, don't go trying to sell this freedom to my little boy, I want him to have a nice marriage and a wonderful wife. Quote, Zeus chuckled, Hera, he's still a baby. Someone scoffed as they entered the chamber, brother, I'm sure she's already written a list of possible brides for the baby. Demeter strolled into the room in her usual golden beauty and smiled at her younger sister, who's on the top of your list right now, Kione. Hera rolled her eyes, of course not. That's slew, tty little d-rate goddess will never be my daughter-in-law. Demeter smiled at the baby and tickled his chin, he's really cute. She giggled at the baby before she turned to look at her sister, ICA. And just tell that you're going to go crazy when he starts liking girls that you don't like. Hera scoffed, no I won't, and I'm sure Naruto will find a great wife for himself. Well, if he's like any of the male gods we all know. That wouldn't happen too soon. Hera took her baby back from Apollo and gave him a small glare, don't you dare teach him to be a playboy like you. Apollo scratched the back of his head, don't worry. Lady Hera, I won't. No he won't. I'll make sure of it. Artemis, along with Athena, Hermes, Hephaestus, Dionysus, and Poseidon stepped into the room. The goddess of the moon was glaring at her twin, relaying the message, don't mess with their new little brother. Hera smiled at her along with Athena, all amused at the frightened look on Apollo's face. Artemis want, D to grab at the chance of making one male god that wouldn't act like a pig and treat women badly, and her new little brother was the perfect chance. He sure is a happy little guy, huh? Said Hermes, with a smile as he waved his caduceus over Naruto's head, making the baby's blue eyes follow George and Martha with incredible amusement. Hey, D, come over here. Dionysus was already snoring on his throne. After a night of trying to find why ways to get drunk, he was utterly spent and couldn't even move, it was a miracle that he made it to the council chamber. Hera shook his head, he better not give Naruto any wine. Apollo ignored his second youngest brother and just tickled the baby's chin, he's a little ball of energy. Naruto was still paying most of his attention to his sunny older brother. And that made Apollo love him even more than before. A little distant away, Poseidon clapped his brother on the shoulder and gave him a small hug, congratulations, brother. The god of the SK. Why gave his brother a smile brighter than any he'd given in the past thousand years? It's been a very long time since we've had a new immortal child, I've almost forgotten how festive it feels. You can do the same, brother. Zeus chuckled as he gave Poseidon a knowing smile, I'm sure you and Amphitrite want to, maybe a try for a little daughter. The god of the seas laughed, I'll sure try. I feel a haiku coming. Almost everyone groaned and glared at the god of poetry as he grinned, I have a little br. Shut up, you idiot. The swift slap on the back of the head by his twin sister, successfully ending the poem. Don't you dare pass on your terrible poem tendencies to Naruto. Ares and Aphrodite were the last to arrive, and the goddess of love quickly squealed and skipped over to the group. He's so cute, squealed Aphrodite as she hopped up and down excitedly as she looked down at the baby. He is going to be the most handsome god when he grows up. Ares, Apollo and Hermes all rolled their eyes at the goddess of love's words, but she ignored all of them. I can just tell that he's going to break the hearts of many girls in the world. Don't mess around with my son's love life, Aphrodite. Hera said with a stern stare, he should have his own choice in choosing his wife. The goddess of love rolled her eyes, oh please, like you haven't already thought out a list of goddesses for him to potentially marry. 
Demeter laughed. Yep, she totally did. I haven't. The queen looked away and kissed her son's forehead. I'm sure he will choose a nice lady for himself. I'm sure he will Tilda. Cooed Aphrodite as she tickled the baby's chin, making him gurgle and giggle uncontrollably. Oh you're so cute. Ignoring her stepchildren, Hera smiled and gestured to her two sons, come over here, Ares, Hephaestus. Come meet your little brother. The god of war and god of the smiths stepped closer to their mother's throne and looked down at the small bundle. It had been a very long time since they had seen their mother so happy and their father so calm and cheerful, so the little kid definitely did something good, but they just didn't expect their mother to have another child. As another child of Zeus and Hera, Ares expected more from his little brother, he didn't grow up instantly like Apollo and didn't feel very strong, so it was a little disappointing, he wanted a new brother to spar with. Do you want to hold him? Asked Hera looking at her most skilled son, Hephaestus. The deformed god looked apprehensive, he was afraid that the baby would be scared of his face. And to be honest, he was a little jealous. His mother and father both looked happy and proud of his little brother and didn't kick him off Mount Olympus, so much better than his childhood. But nonetheless, he wanted to at least hold his little brother once, even if he would be scared of him. Yes, please. The smith god gently reached out and accepted the bundle with his calloused hands, bringing the baby close to his chest. Hera smiled at the sight, how sweet. Hey, softly muttered the burly god, I'm your older brother, Hephaestus. He was expecting some crying or sobbing or the laughter of the other gods. But instead he heard giggling. Looking down, Naruto was giggling and was reaching up at him with his little arms and hands. Hephaestus looked shocked at his little brother pull. D lightly on his beard and continued to giggle, he wasn't scared of him at all and seemed to like him a lot. Ah, that's cute. Aphrodite smiled at her husband, a little glad that the little baby liked him. He really likes you. Hephaestus looked over at his wife and gave a small smile, yeah. Ares scoffed and walked up to his least favorite brother, let me see the little brat. He, without much tact, scooped Naruto out of his brother's arms and held him at arm's length. Hera, Artemis and Demeter almost lashed out at him and Apollo, Poseidon and Zeus almost blasted him, but he spoke up before they could react. I'm your older brother too, squirt. Don't be so rough, you idiotic buffoon. Athena glared at her brother and gently took her little brother from his hands, he's a baby. Ares rolled his eyes, he's a baby god. The god of war glowered at his sister and the baby, who was snuggling into Athena's warm embrace, if he's so weak then what's the point of keeping him? Many others glared at him, but he continued. Right, you brat. Naruto looked at Ares from Athena's arms, but blue eyes appearing oddly angry, wah. With his cry, a small thundercloud manifested above Ares' head, about the same size as a book. With bolts of lightning blasting from it, the god of war yelped when a bolt blasted the top of his head, scorching the back of his head bald. What in Hades is this? He yelled angrily, but the cloud blasted him again, this time in the eye when he looked up at it. Shit, my eye. Apollo laughed along with almost everyone else, little bros got some skills. Athena smirked and hugged Naruto closer, I guess Naruto's not weak after all. Little brat, Naruto giggled at his brother's smoking hair and bounced around in Athena's arms. The goddess of wisdom, couldn't help but smile at her little brother, someone she had been looking forward to meeting. It had been a long time since a new immortal had been born, especially one with so much potential, the children of both Hera and Zeus had tremendous potential. She looked forward to seeing how a god growing up in modern times would be different from the rest of them. She had hoped that he'd be the new blood Olympus had long since needed. Hello, Naruto. Athena gave the baby a small smile and gently held him in front of her, looking into his electric blue with her dark gray. I'm Athena, one of your older sisters. I'm also your older sister, whispered Artemis softly as she stood next to her sister. I'm Artemis, and I'll make sure you don't turn into a pig like some of your brothers. Apollo rolled his eyes, very funny. You gave him control of a part of your domain, brother. Asked Poseidon. Zeus smiled and nodded. Yes, since mother named him Maelstrom, I figured I'd grant him the con. Trawl over violent storms and the four winds. Rhea and Hera smiled as the others listened on. I was going to give Aeolus godhood, but my son should be more suitable for the position when he is fully grown. Hera nodded along. 
He can still choose his own domains later, but these two will be the bigger and more powerful ones. Apollo grinned, so the little guy is the god of violent storms and four winds, not bad at all. He grinned at Hermes and whispered softly, we are so bringing him with us when he's older, Dites right, he's going to be a heartthrob. Artemis heard and glared at her twin, I will never let you turn our little brother into a player like you. Neither will I, said Hera, giving Hermes and Apollo a stern stare. The two gods chuckled sheepishly and nodded, got it, no bringing him to meet girls. Poseidon leaned closer to his brother and whispered in his ear, so I guess your kid isn't going to be much like you. Zeus chuckled and crossed his arms, if Artemis and H. Era are guarding him like that all the time he's going to have a hard time meeting any girl. I don't think that's going to be a problem. The king of Olympus had no doubt that the girl will be throwing themselves at his son. Who was a prince of Olympus and most likely one of the most powerful gods? The problem is keeping most of them off of him. Poseidon laughed, the next few years are going to be entertaining to watch. Rhea stood next to Hera's throne and smiled down at her grandson, the newest addition to her family. She had a feeling that he would make a difference on Olympus and the world. As a god and the son of Zeus and Hera, Rhea could only imagine how much Naruto would accomplish in his eternal life. Temple of Zeus, the lord of the sky leaned against one of many grand columns. Supporting his personal palace with his arms crossed, staring down at the human world with a small frown on his face. Ever since his reconciliation with his beautiful wife, he felt more relaxed and stress-free than he ever had been. But there were still concerns in his mind. Perhaps it was the overwhelming fatherly love he felt for his youngest boy, but he was really starting to worry and miss high. S2 living demigod children down on earth, little Talia and little Jason. A pair of slender arms snaked around his waist, making him smile as he felt a pair of soft lips touch his face. Is something troubling you, dear? Zeus turned and pulled Hera into his arms, kissing her softly, of course not, these are the best times of my life. Hera sighed with a small smile, you know that your lies will never fool me Tilda. The lord of the sky laughed and kissed his queen's forehead, I suppose that is true, but at least now neither of us has to worry about anything coming between us. Zeus sighed in relaxation and played with Hera's golden tresses that smelled of roses, which is good for me, you wouldn't believe how scary you can be when you're mad. You should talk, mister. Zap happy. Hera giggled, but looked up at her husband with a knowing look, but seriously, tell me what you are concerned about. Zeus stared at his wife and conceded, I was just checking on Talia and Jason. Oh, muttered the queen softly. They're the last. You know that, right? Zeus kissed his wife again and caressed her soft cheek as she nodded. I know. Hera gazed down upon the human world and quickly found her husband's demigod children. I would be lying if I said I don't mind them, but I understand that they are your children and you should be concerned for them. She knew better than anyone on Olymp, as that her husband greatly cared for all his children, but must be stern and strict to set an example as king, except to Athena and Artemis he would turn into a big marshmallow whenever they asked for something. I personally look over Jason's life, he is my champion and I do enjoy seeing him having fun. Jason is doing very well, but I'm concerned for Talia. The king was glad to see his demig. Odie's son play around with his sister after learning how to walk, but he could tell that Talia's relationship with her mother was quickly deteriorating. She resents her mother and I could feel some anger coming from her. A common thing among demigods and their parents, whispered Hera. Zeus wrapped his arms around Hera, making her smile at his affection. But I can only hope for the best, I can't interfere with the lives of demigods. He kissed his wife and led her back to their bed, smiling at the small crib next to it. I'll focus on my true son, focus on our little boy. Zeus smiled proudly at his youngest and nodded. I've already ordered Lupa and Dionysus to announce the birth of Naruto to both camps. A new temple will be built in Camp Jupiter so the campers could pray to him, and a nice brazier will be made at Camp Half-Blood so the campers could give their offerings. That sounds great. Hera smiled down at Naruto, who was sleeping soundly with his arms and legs spread out on his small mattress. She couldn't help but feel incredibly warm and safe with her husband's arms around her waist and rested her head on his chest. Finally, I have my perfect little family, Zeus, with a series of trickery and deceit. 
made Kronos regurgitate the previously consumed gods and goddesses, which are now known as the original Olympians. Within the Temple of Athena, a large library stood, an edifice of ten stories. It was a beacon of knowledge and wisdom upon Mount Olympus. Designed by the goddess herself, Athena's library was the most extensive and thorough collection of Nold. GE in existence and contains ancient documents mortals would die for. Even from afar, the other temple of the gods, the tall beacon could see seen, almost as eye-catching as the tall Athena Parthino. And that stood as the symbol of the temple. All of Athena's children would kill for a chance to explore their mother's library, and only a selected few ever got the chance, it was truly a magnificent structure of significance. But according to Naruto, it looked like a weird pencil. Athena, whined the three-year-old god, you've read this story a hundred times already. I've read it ten times, and you still haven't memorized it yet. The goddess of wisdom stood over her younger brother and gave him a stern stare that would make the strongest warrior shiver, but her brother just pouted at her, his blue eyes as bright as the stars. This is our family history and perhaps one of the most important moments of our existence. I know, I've heard the story from you and from mommy. The small boy, wearing a simple white chitin with a golden laurel placed upon his spiky blonde hair, rested his head on his hand. Kronos is my evil grandfather who ate everyone except for dad, and he was defeated by dad, my mommy. And our uncles and aunts. And what is this war named? The Titanomachi, replied the boy, looking up at his sister who had her arms crossed. Athena nodded, but lightly smacked Naruto's head with the textbook. You're correct, but don't slouch. The boy sat up tall and pouted, and don't pout. The goddess had clearly noticed that despite his lack of physical growth at the moment, her little brother was much more mentally developed than other children his age, his vocabulary was already quite large and he could communicate very well. If he would only be more motivated at times, he'd be perfect. Can we do something fun now? Athena sighed and sat down next to her brother, and what is fun? Naruto grinned and hugged one of Athena's arms, well, you can teach me how to use Aegis and to fight with a spear. The boy's smile was as contagious as ever and Athena couldn't help but smile back, I'm sure your training will be much more fun and exciting than Nike's. Even at three years old, Naruto knew how to convince his sister to do things. Please Tilda I want to learn from the coolest goddess on Olympus. You are one tricky little boy, aren't you? Athena wrapped an arm around Naruto's shoulders and kissed his hair. Yep, but no, I won't teach you how to fight. She raised her hand and silenced Naruto before he could speak. Father had asked Nike to teach you and I. I'm sure she is a good teacher with a very positive outlook. I will teach you when you are finished with her training and when you actually pass my classes, which means getting A's on every test. That's not fair. Of course it is. Naruto pouted and crossed his small arms. Fine, but if I do all those things, you have to teach me how to fight. Athena extended her pinky with a smile. I pinky promise. The boy happily hooked his pinky with his sister's pinky promise. The goddess of wisdom kissed her baby brother's forehead and ruffled his hair, feeling much more love for him than any of her other brothers. Her plan of keeping Naruto from adopting the sleazy and obnoxious habits of the others working perfectly. Along with Artemis, Athena planned to teach Naruto a great deal and form him into a proper and decent god with great respect for all men and women. There should at least be one male god on Olympus without the mindset of the old age, and Naruto will be the new blood they all needed. Suddenly, a bright light appeared in the middle of the library and tore Athena's attention away from her giggling brother. There he is, my second most annoying brother. Lil, bro, Apollo, the god of the sun, manifested from the light in his usual beach shorts and tank top. He wore a pair of sunglasses on his head instead of his usual laurel, something Athena wouldn't mind having if her brother wouldn't stop glowing. Apollo's smile displayed his bright pearly whites and he spread his arms as he walked up to Naruto, he laughed as he picked the boy up and placed him on his shoulders. Naruto was laughing and held onto his brother's head. Good morning, Apollo Nichin. There's my awesome lil, bro. Announced Apollo loudly as he bounced Naruto up and down on his shoulders, smiling at the laughter of the toddler. Ever since the young god was born, Apollo was determined to become his favorite brother, and so far he was successful. The first hurdle was Ares, which was basically trying to step over a foot-tall fence. 
Naruto despised the warmonger and hated how the war god would make him angry with his war aura. Then Dionysus was no better, basically an old drunk without a spine. Apollo's real competition came in the form of Hermes and Hephaestus, who both constantly tried to buy Naruto's love with cool weapons, armor and talking snakes stuck to a pole. But Naruto didn't need to worry. Apollo Nichin was here for the rescue. Do you have to teach him to call you that, Apollo? Athena sighed and shook her head at her sunny brother, Naruto is a prince of Olympus, not some Japanese child. Hey, his name is Japanese, so there is nothing wrong with him calling me Nichin. Apollo grinned and gave Athena a look, you're just jealous I'm so much closer to him. Athena rolled her eyes, whatever you say, Apollo. Quote, the god of prophecies lifted his brother from his shoulders and placed him in his arms, so you ready to go, kiddo. Naruto nodded with a grin, yep. See y'all later, Athena. The young god gave his sister a smile, bye, bye, Athena. Athena sighed again and watched her baby brother wave goodbye at her as Apollo enveloped him in a blinding light. She didn't like having Apollo teach Naruto about the human world. If it were up to Athena, she would teach Naruto everything and Artemis should show him around the globe. The last thing she wanted was for Naruto to adopt the same qualities as his brothers. A poem obsessed, womanizing Naruto wasn't something she ever wanted to see. I'll have to make sure that Naruto listens to me more than that sunny idiot. Where are we going today, Nichin? Chirped the tiny god as he sat in a car seat on Saul, Apollo's sun chariot. Since his little brother was on board, the sun god morphed his chariot into the form of a mini cooper. The Maserati was a little too much for a family car. Can we go to Tokyo again? I'm hungry and I want ramen. Sorry, but no Japan today, Apollo grinned, but don't worry lil, bro. W. Air going to a place with pretty good food. Since Apollo regularly made trips around the world on his chariot, Zeus had tasked him to teach Naruto about the world. In the past year, the sun god had toured the world with his little brother. They went camping and fishing in British Columbia, caught a hockey game in Detroit, went to a soccer game in London, had a feast in Tokyo, went hiking in South America, and visited a safari in Africa. Naruto loved every single place they visited, but much to Apollo's eternal joy, he loved Japan and the ramen they served. Though there was nothing like visiting Greece with the new god, Athena had already read Naruto a few stories of their time in Greece, and Apollo brought him there to show him, brought him to their old home. Athens, Sparta and Delphi looked nothing like they used to, but it was still a sight to see. The nostalgia was lost to the young god but Apollo had the time of his life showing his brother where everything used to be. He showed, Naruto the stone mother Rhea used to trick Kronos, the ancient cave Zeus grew up in, and of course, the ancient site of the oracle. He decided to skip over the ruins of Troy, that damned place still made him sick. Are we going to Shanghai? Asked the boy curiously, I could eat some dumplings again. Nope, we're staying in the United States today. Not McDonald's whined the god of the four winds. Apollo laughed and patted his baby bro's hair, don't worry, I'm not bringing you to that horrid place ever again. The last time the sun god brought Naruto to a McDonald's, the boy blasted the R.O. Nald McDonald clown into pieces with a bolt of lightning, thank Hecate that the mist made the mortals as oblivious as ever. You might accidentally kill someone this time. I don't like clowns. Don't worry kiddo, there are no clowns where we're going we're going to a place with a lot of pretty girls. Boring. How did the boy as he crossed his arms? You wouldn't say that when you're older, lil, bro. Looking down from his chariot, Apollo accelerated, wanting to arrive at their destination sooner, the mortals would just have to suffer a shorter day. His father had said not to bring Naruto to Camp Half-Blood or Camp Jupiter yet. But there was one more place they could visit that would be quite fun. Apollo understood why his father didn't want Naruto to see the camps yet. He was still the Uri young and he shouldn't let mortals see him until he was older and had the stature of a true god. Not to mention that the Romans and Greeks ordeal. Soon, more and more demigods at the camps will be praying to Naruto. And from their prayers he will develop more. Unlike the others, he probably wouldn't have two separate aspects, Greek and Roman, since he didn't live through the different eras but it would be easier for him if he was more developed. Are we there yet? Almost. Just sit back and take in the scenery. 
Apollo watched as his brother peered out the window, resting his head Aga. Inst the door with a bored look on his face. As the god of sight, he couldn't help but wonder how Naruto's life would turn out, even with his glimpses into the future Apollo couldn't tell. As a son of Zeus and Hera, it would only be natural for Naruto to become a powerful god. For some reason, Apollo couldn't shake the feeling that his little brother would play a part of the great prophecy, maybe even the lead role. Some cloud nymphs and wind nymphs followed after Saul and waved happily at Naruto, paying a kind tribute to their lord, the commander of the four winds. Naruto, being the child that he was, giggled and waved back to the spirits, making the gush and giggle at how adorable their young lord looked. After Ares and Hephaestus, Apollo could see the surprise of the spirits whenever T. He could see Naruto, he was much more normal. Okay, we're here. Apollo grinned as he set his chariot to autopilot and placed a hand on Naruto's shoulders. The one good thing about visiting place. S so close to home, the ride just takes minutes. The two godly siblings were enveloped in a shroud of sunlight and vanished from the chariot. Where are we? In the middle of Kansas somewhere, N. Swerved the god of the sun with his hands placed in his pockets, you should get familiar with this place, your subordinates often unleash tornadoes here and you will be getting reports from them when you're older. Okay, muttered the boy, not really understanding, he hadn't even met his subordinates yet. Apollo squinted his eyes and looked out at the open fields, his golden hair looked to be glowing as the sun shined above them. Naruto held onto his brother's hand and tried to see if there was anything around but his eyes weren't as good as his older brother. Apollo smiled when he saw some thing a fair distance away and tugged at Naruto's hand. Wait for me here, okay. The god of the sun smirked. Don't wander off, I'll be back to get you in a second. Okay, but hurry up. You got it, lil, bro, I'll go the speed of light. Quote, Naruto shrugged as his brother vanished with a flash of light, he was getting used to seeing such things. The boy merely sat down in the middle of the giant golden field of wheat. A place he knew his aunt Demeter would love. Perhaps it was because of his domain, but Naruto felt very comfortable lying in the fields with nothing but the sounds of blowing wind as music. With a smile, he levitated himself and hovered just above the crops, floating weightlessly as he stared up at the blue sky and white clouds. He plucked up a shard of wheat and played with it as he sighed. His mind couldn't help but wander back to the lessons Athena had taught him and how she mentioned that the sky was actually their great-grandfather, Oranos. At first Naruto was extra. Meli excited to learn about the primordial of the sky, wondering if he was as cool as his dad, but the story soon turned sour. Naruto couldn't really understand how Oranos would treat his children so badly. The young god couldn't even imagine his mommy and dad throwing him into Tartarus, it made him uncomfortable thinking about it. Then Athena told him the story of Kronos and Rhea. That made Naruto feel even worse. He loved his grandma. All the stories with such terrible fathers just made Naruto feel sick. In his opinion, all fathers should love their children, just like how Zeus loved him. Hehehehe. <laughs> Some giggling broke Naruto out of his thoughts and made him look over. It was pretty far away, but Naruto heard some girls laughing. Sometimes the wind would carry to him sounds from far away. Floating higher into the air, Naruto saw a group of girls setting up some sort of tents around a farmhouse. It was the one place in the large wheat field with a small forest of tall oak trees, A. Eh? Nd the girls were running around in the shade. They were all wearing silver hoodies and silver camouflage pants, and for some reason they had some sort of aura of power surrounding them. It looked fun and felt interesting. By the time Naruto found a smile on his face, he was already flying over to the girls. The closer to he got to the group of girls, the more familiar their auras felt, but he couldn't exactly place it. Nonetheless, they were all playing tag around a series of oak trees, which looked very fun. Some of the girls only looked a few years older than Naruto, and some of the other girls stood along the readied tents. Smiling at the others, the whole scene felt very peaceful and fun and Naruto just couldn't help but want to join. Hello, the peace couldn't have left quicker. Who goes there? demanded one of the older girls. In an instant, every single girl had bows in their hands with arrows knocked and ready. Naruto dropped to his feet and raised his hands, very surprised at the sudden hostility. These girls were nothing like the kind nymphs he was used to seeing around the sky or the wind, they looked like they were mad at him. 
like he did something really wrong. Ch. Eora around them flared and they all had more power than before. Granted, they were still really weak compared to what he was used to facing, it was still surprising. Um, hi. One of the older girls lowered her bow and walked forward. Normal human children can't see through the mist, so who are you and why are you here? Naruto scratched the back of his head, my brother brought me here for L. Unchan I just happened to see you all here. What do you want, boy? I I just wanted to play. The girl raised an eyebrow, that's it, not any other perverted reason. Chloe, relax, another girl, who looked older than the rest placed a hand on Chloe's shoulder, he's just a child. I think he might be a clear-sighted mortal or a son of some wheat nymph around here. But Phoebe, don't worry, I don't see any malice in his eyes. The girl gave Naruto a small smile as she crossed her arms, he's just a small child, he is far too young at the moment to be treated like other men. Phoebe stepped closer to the boy, mildly impressed that he looked so calm when there were so many arrows aimed at his head. What is your name, child? Naru, what is all the commotion about? A sudden voice p, pierced through the wind as everyone turned to the direction of the tents. An older girl, around the age of 16, stepped forward and all the hunters gave her a small bow. There was a silver tiara o in her forehead and she looked very pretty in Naruto's opinion, like a princess on those cartoons Apollo would show him. My lady had asked everyone to complete setting up camp. Zoe, a boy found his way into our camp. Chloe pointed over at Naruto with a frown. What should we do with him? Naruto gave the girl a smile, one that would have melted the heart of any human girl, but Zoe didn't react to it. These girls are a little weird. Zoe, is something the matter? Naruto was further confused when all the girls suddenly fell to their knees and bowed toward the direction of the series of tents, where one girl stood. His eyes squinted to get a better look, it was a young girl, around the age of the younger girls around him, and she had auburn hair, a shade that looked very familiar. Th, and he saw her silvery eyes and felt her extremely powerful aura, and instantly, a bright smile appeared on his face. Before any of the girls could react, Naruto sped over to the girl like a swift brie. Z of wind and wrapped his arms around her waist. Arty, every single girl, including the really nice Phoebe, immediately aimed their arrows at Naruto and glared at him with as much hate as possible. Get your filthy hands off of my lady, right now cried Zoe loudly, relax, Zoe, ordered Artemis with a hand raised before she sighed, he means no harm at all. Naruto giggled and bounced up and down, I've missed you so much, Artie. He smiled up at his sister, looking extremely happy, I haven't seen you for such a long time. It's only been a week, Naru. Artemis smiled softly and ruffled Naruto's hair. The huntress would visit Olympus every weekend to attend the Council of the Gods, and by tradition she shared with her sisters, stepmother and aunt, they would all sit around the main hearth and have tea. Since Naruto was born he would also be there at most times, and Artemis loved it. Not only did she like spending time with her little brother, her aunt Hestia would bake much more cookies when the boy was present. And Naruto would always share a lot with her. Why do you look so different? Naruto curious expression made Artemis smile even brighter, you're like me. The goddess gave a soft laugh. This is my child form, and it is still older than you, little boy. Artemis glowed and transformed into her usual form when she would visit Olympus, her twenty-year-old form. Z. O and the other hunters retracted their bows and arrows, my lady, who is this boy? Artemis sighed and lifted Naruto into her arms, smiling as he wrapped his arms around her neck and snuggled against her. This is Naruto. The youngest son of my father and Lady Hera, the god of violent storms and commander of the four winds, and my little brother. Naruto smiled and waved, hello. All the girls, eyes widened and they bowed their heads at the boy, utterly shocked that they almost shot the youngest prince of Olympus. They had heard about the child Lady Hera gave birth to a few years ago, but they had never seen him. They had assumed that like many other gods, he would be fully grown and not still be a child. But nonetheless, they would have never expected the god of violent storms to suddenly stumble into their camp. Some were relieved that they didn't fire upon the young god, the last thing they wanted was for a tornado to suddenly destroy the wheat field, or Kansas. We're sorry, Lord Naruto. Naruto giggled at the pretty lady, it's okay. 
These are my hunters, Naruto. Artemis proudly showed her followers to her brother with a smile, I've wanted you to meet them for a while. But it seems your idiot brother deemed it necessary to bring you here without telling anyone. The goddess of the moon glared behind her, get out here, you big ball of gas. Relax, Lil, sis. A Paul. Oh had a grin on his face as he stepped into view, making almost all the hunters glare at him as they bowed. I wanted to show Lil, bro your hunters and was about to warn you about him, but he found his own way here. The sun god gave his brother a small poke on the forehead, making him pout, and I told you to stay where I left you. But you were taking so long, Nichen. You're lucky my hunters, didn't take Naru for a pervert and start shooting him full of arrows. Apollo scoffed, I know you're proud of your hunters, sis, but they won't ever hurt Naruto. The hunters frowned at the dismissive tone, but didn't comment on it. He may be young and little, but he trains with Nike every day and can control his domains pretty well, I doubt any arrow from your girls would ever hit him. Nonetheless, you were being stupid. Artemis pulled on Apollo's ear, making him yelp, and for the last time, I am the older twin, I am your older sister. Naruto only giggled happily as the sight of his brother and sister. Seemingly used to their antics. He would have watched the scene longer, but he was really hungry. Artie, I'm really hungry, he said as he rubbed his belly, do you have anything to eat? Artemis released Apollo, who immediately nursed his purple ear, yes, we were about to have lunch. She turned to Phoebe, please ready two more portions, Phoebe, as much as detest Apollo having lunch with us. I would like to show Naruto around the hunt. Yes, my lady. Artemis smiled and brought Naruto to the large and tall tent that sheltered a long dinner table capable of sitting all of the hunters plus a few more. The goddess sat at the head of the table and glared at Apollo when he sat next to her, but seeing that Naruto was in her arms, she didn't want to make another scene in front of him. In accordance to Athena, Artemis was trying as hard as she could to groom Naruto into a proper male god. Soon the hunters all filtered into the tent, many of them carrying large and full plates of food. The long table was quickly filled to the brim with food, roasted boar and chicken with mountains of salads made from freshly picked greens and berries. Artemis filled a plate and placed it in front of Naruto. Give it a try, Naru, it's not as good as Aunt Hestia's food, but it is still quite delicious. Thanks, Artie. The twins smiled at the sight of Naruto shoving the food into his mouth. He had gotten bored of the ambrosias and nectar on Olympus, sometimes it was just better to try something different. The boy looked happy to have lunch with so many people, he really appreciated family, just like his mother. Both Apollo and Artemis had noticed that ever since Naruto was born, everyone enjoyed having dinner together more at night, even Hephaestus stopped being so reclusive. Naruto was quickly becoming the glue of the Olympians. Is there anything else you need, my lady? Artemis smiled and shook her head at her lieutenant, everything is fine, Zoe, take a seat and join us. Zoe smiled and nodded, yes, my lady, Naru, this is Zoe Nightshade, my lieutenant. Zoe bowed a little at the young god as Naruto smiled, Zoe is really pretty. His squeaky voice seemed to cut through conversations and many hunters looked over at him and Zoe, who looked surprised at the child's words, even Artemis herself looked surprised. Um. Thank you, Lord Naruto. Ho ho ho. Laughed Apollo as he grinned at his brother. Already have a crush on a hunter, lil, bro. Artemis hissed and smacked Apollo's head, shut up, idiot. What's a crush? Asked Naruto looking up at his sister. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Artemis gestured back to the food, come, let us continue our lunch. Apollo had a grin on his face the whole meal. Just like other gods, Naruto should have quite the interest in the ladies. And even if Athena and Artemis were to shelter him so much, it wouldn't change anything. Apollo could already see himself bringing Naruto to a club in California with Hermes, I. T would be awesome to see his brother grow into a real man. He wouldn't be excited for Hera's reaction, but sooner or later, they might have to build a cabin for Naruto at Camp Half-Blood. Artemis, W.H. O looked like she knew what her twin was thinking glared at him with her eyes glowing silver, making him look away with a smirk. As if protecting Naruto from Apollo, Artemis lifted her little brother and placed him on her lap. Making sure to block out the sun god. 
The hunters were a little shocked that their patron goddess was being so affectionate to a boy, even though he was her little brother. Though most of them were fine with it since Naruto was only a child. Naruto looked around the camp as he munched on his salad, can you teach me how to shoot arrows, Artie? Hey, cried Apollo, you asked me to teach you that. Artemis smirked and wrapped her arms around Naruto, Naru is obviously a smart god and he wants to learn from the more skilled archer. Apollo glowered at his sister, his re reputation for his brother was very important. After all, I've been hunting since ancient times and you've basically stopped using your bow since you started chasing girls. Naruto grinned, it's okay, Nichin. Apollo frowned, but looked at his brother, I still want you to teach me, but I want Artie to teach me too. Apollo smiled and patted his head, fine. Artemis gave a small laugh and held Naruto tighter. You have a lot of teachers, don't you? Naruto smiled and continued to snack on his food, Nike is teaching you, we are teaching you, and I'm pretty sure father is going to teach you how to use lightning. The hunters stared at Naruto and wondered how powerful he would become when he fully matured. Don't let it get to your head, Naru, pay attention to Athena and make sure you take her lessons into account. I will, muttered the boy as he reached for more food. Artemis smirked, you don't want to develop a big head like your brothers. Ha ha, Apollo sighed, already regretting their visit to the hunter's camp. My lady, we're finished. Zoe stood with the other hunters and bowed to the goddess and gods, Phoebe and I will start the afternoon training for the girls. All right. Go ahead, Zoe. Naruto smiled at the pretty girl. Bye, bye, Zoe. Zoe bowed. Thank you, my lady, and goodbye, Lord Naruto. Apollo was about to say something, but one look from his twin changed. His mind, he didn't want to dig another arrow out of his ear, though he did find Naruto's comments to Zoe incredibly amusing. If the youngest son of Zeus and Hera developed feelings for Artemis, oldest hunter, Aphrodite would have a field day. That kind of drama would be like an amplified version of Paris and Helen. And as much as Artemis loved Naruto, Apollo wasn't sure how she would react if H. Her little brother tried to take Zoe away from the hunt. Artie, asked Naruto as he stared at the girls walking away from the tent. Artemis adjusted her little brother's position on her lap and looked down at him, what is it? She asked as she kissed the top of his head feeling no more hesitation to smother Naruto with affection with her hunters gone. Why were some of the girls glaring at me when they saw me? Naruto looked genuinely confused, did I do something wrong? Artemis smiled sadly and shook her head, no, some of the girls just had some bad experiences with boys in the past. Oh, like how I don't like Ares. Apollo smiled and shook his head, no, Lil, bro, those girls have it way worse. He sighed and rested back on his seat, honestly, we gods will never really understand mortals. Especially since your parents love you so much. Artemis nodded, Zeus is a great father and he loves all of us very much, and Lady Hera loves you more than anything. She frowned and thought B. Act to her hunters, surrogate daughters. Many mortal men are terrible fathers and treat their daughters badly, and they join my hunt sometimes to get away from all of that. Bad fathers. Naruto th. Odd back to the stories of Oranos and Kronos. Apollo nodded with a toothpick held between his lips, as strict as the old man is, he is a good father and cares for all of us, but I can personally s. I that I see terrible fathers all the time, and I see everything. The sun god snapped his fingers and pointed at his twin, that reminds me, I have a list of homes with bad father and little daughters for you. Artemis nodded, good, my newer hunters need some practice. That's wrong, muttered the boy softly, fathers should all be loving and kind and should protect their children, just like dad. Naruto had always enjoyed having his dad tucking him in at night or have him hug him in the morning, it made him feel safe. I don't want to see bad fathers. Artemis smiled and ruffled Naruto's hair, that's good. It means that you're already a better man than most. Apollo smiled, come on kiddo, I'll show you how to hold a bow. Naruto nodded, okay. The twins both looked at their brother a little concerned. He was acting a little strange and was lacking his usual enthusiasm. Mount Olympus, Temple of Zeus. Mommy, cried Naruto as he ran into his father's temple. Zeus and Hera were, both enjoying the latest works of Apollo's children in Hollywood and both of them smiled when they saw their little boy run into the living room. 
Since Naruto's birth, the king and queen had both Desi. Dead to live full-time in Zeus' temple, it was easier to keep everything in one place, especially since Zeus will always spend the night with his wife now. The temple of Zeus had turned into a much cozier and homely place. And Hera was falling in love with it all over again. There's my baby boy. Hera scooped Naruto into her arms and pulled him close, kissing the top of his head as she sat back down on the sofa. Zeus smiled and patted his son's head, chuckling when Naruto sent him a bright grin. How was your day with Apollo, my son? Naruto crawled from his mother's lap to his father's and smiled up at him. It was great. We went to Artie's hunter camp and we had lunch together. Zeus smiled and rubbed his son's head, which was really small compared to his large hand, we watched the hunt. R.S. shoot at their archery range and Nietzsche and Artie taught me how to hold a bow. Hera giggled along with her husband's chuckle, and the hunters were all pretty nice in the end, and Zoe is very pretty. Very pretty, huh? Zeus smiled as he flicked his son's forehead, you like her. Hera shoved her husband, giving him a look. So you had a fun day. Very fun, and guess what? Zeus chuckled, what, from now on, I will also be the god of fatherhood and family. Zeus choked on his breath and Hera's eyes widened, I've decided that I don't want to see bad fathers anymore and I want to look over that domain. He smiled at his mother, is that okay, mommy, I want to watch over families just like you and Auntie Hestia. Um, that's fine with me. The queen managed a small smile, family is. The one domain that should have more gods and goddesses. She looked at her husband, right, dear. Zeus cleared his throat and nodded, yes, those are fine choices, son. Cool. Naruto grinned at his parents, so from now on, I am the god of violent storms, commander of the four winds, and god of fatherhood and family. Naruto whined with a pout as his mother held him in her arms, hugging him close as they walked back to their home. He didn't feel tired at all and felt he could still train more. It was cruel to not allow him to practice after teaching him how to become omnipresent. Naruto Al, most managed to manifest himself at 10 places at once, and he was close to achieving 11 places, at least he was until his mother came and carried him away like a baby. Hera shook her head, no, why? Our sister has left on her chariot already, so it's nighttime and you should be resting. The queen gently kissed the side of Naruto's head and rubbed her cheek against his soft hair, and you've been training too much lately. You need to spend more time with me and your father. I spend time with you every day, exclaimed the boy with his arms crossed. One hour every day is not enough, said Th. E goddess of motherhood as she smiled at her baby boy, you're still a child and you should be with your parents all the time. If you're like this now, your father and I will never see you when you're grown up. I'm the god of family and fatherhood, mommy, of course I would spend time with my family. Naruto hugged his mother around her neck and kissed her cheek, you don't have to worry. Hera s. Me led as she walked into the temple of Zeus, nodding back to the dozens of servants bowing to her and her son. Everyone had gotten used to seeing the new god in his mother's arms at this time of night. And the happy smile on the queen's face. Since Naruto's birth there were no more fights or spats between Zeus and Hera and the servants were all relieved, many of them had died as collateral damage. The temple of Zeus had also changed. There were a lot more furniture for families instead of throne-like one seats and the king would be home every single night. Lady Hera would spend almost every night at her husband's temple. And when she didn't, Lord Zeus would be over at the temple of Hera. Overall, the king and queen of Olympus had never been so close and in love. Can I not go to Athena's lesson tomorrow, mommy? Asked Naruto while rubbing his eyes, his exhaustion starting to show itself. Nichen is bringing me to Hef's forge and I want to go there for the entire day. Hum, maybe, replied the queen. Hera was conflicted about Naruto being so close to his half-siblings at first, but in the end she was happy to see her son so happy with them. Athena and Artemis often try to prevent Naruto's brothers from affecting him with their idiosyncrasies, which was great in Hera's books. And even though there was a chance that Apollo and Hermes may still turn Naruto into a playboy, they w. Air still good big brothers and loved Naruto greatly. Then there was Hephaestus, who Hera was very happy to see Naruto being close to, her crippled son had suffered enough already from her and her husband's hands over the years. And the queen was relieved to see him finally bond with his family. Since Naruto's birth, 
Hephaestus started to become more social with others and actually started attend family dinners on a nightly basis. Naruto's presence as the god of family was truly becoming the glue of Olympus. Please Tilda, pleaded the boy with puppy dog eyes, I really want to go to the forges, Hef said he'd make me a new sword. Hera smiled, Finn, not tomorrow, honey. Zeus smiled at his wife and son as he greeted them in the living room of his temple, clearly having heard his son's request. His smile grew when Hera sat down next to him on the sofa and when Naruto crawled over onto his lap, grinning up at him with all the innocence in the world. It had been almost seven years since Naruto had been born, and he was still a child, something that Zeus and his wife were thankful for. All their children grew up too fast, it was nice to have one who grew at a slower pace. Tomorrow is April 22nd, honey. Zeus smiled as he ruffled his son's hair, it should be a good day for us to show Naruto Camp Jupiter. Hera hummed and nodded as she crossed her arms, sure, I think it is time for him to see the camps anyway. April 22nd, the festival of Jupiter and Juno, was one of the most important days for the Romans. It was the day they pay tribute to their most important god and goddess, the king and queen of Olympus. Every year, Camp Jupiter would have countless offerings for them and will host a large party for everyone in camp in New Rome. Their temples will be filled with even more, e prayers than usual and the other gods would sometimes contribute as well. Naruto grinned, so I finally get to see the Roman camp. Hera smiled and nodded, yes, you should get to know these places. The queen's hair started to morph from being golden blonde to obsidian black, her long wild dress turned into black robes with an overlaying goat skin cloak. You don't have a Roman aspect, but you should get familiar with them and how they behave, after all, you might have to teach them a lesson as the god of family and fatherhood. Zeus' appearance changed as well, his beard and hair turned be blonde and well trimmed and his dress shirt and slacks turned into a purple toga with a golden trimming. You are their godly prince, my son, and they will bow down to you. Naruto could clearly tell that in their Roman aspects, Juno and Jupiter were stricter, but their eyes were no less warm and loving when they looked at him, so he just smiled, I know, I'll make sure to pay attention tomorrow. Quote, you can go tell your sister about not taking her class tomorrow, I will tell Apollo and Vulcan for you. Okay, thanks dad. The young prince sped out of his home with a blast of wind, flying through the air at great speeds. Since his father had taught him how to manipulate the wind with his powers he had been zipping around Olympus as fast as he could. His mother had scolded him several times we, and he accidentally crashed into one his father's statues and shattered it to pieces. Any statue could be replaced, but Hera was worried sick up to the moment Apollo healed the ichor stained gash on Naruto's head. But Naruto had gained a considerable amount of control since then, so when his mother wasn't looking, he would still go as fast as he could. Feeling the wind contort around him made him fey. L powerful and in control, and it was just very cool. So, in less than a minute, Naruto flew all the way to Athena's temple. Athena, the god of wind called out as he landed on the white marble floor of his sister's temple. You're still awake, right? Besides his parents' temples and the temple of Apollo, Athena's temple was Naruto's most frequented place. All his sister's handmaidens already k now exactly who he was and would bow to him as he walked past them. But unlike the other temples, Athena's was more complicated. Naruto knew his own home like the back of his hand, and despite Apollo's temple's incredibly bright walls, he could still find his way around, but he still had trouble with his sister's temple. The temple of Athena was built like a maze, or a giant library. It was filled, ed with identical columns with identical statues of the goddess herself at every corner of the place. Orange light from the illusion torches illuminated the place and casted perfectly patterned and pr. Oportional shadows along the most clear of white marble found on Mount Olympus. The only way to find his sister in such a place was to focus on her powerful signature, and Naruto was slowly floating his way to her. Thena, calling out the young god again with his hands cupped around his mouth. I'm over here, Naruto. Athena was once again inside her personal library, sitting in the midst of the thousands of aisles that together formed her non-fiction section. The goddess had once told Naruto that she'd not only read all of her books, but she'd also memorized all of them as well. Naruto believed his sister wholeheartedly. In the two years that she had been teaching him, 
she had never once opened a book to actually read. Every time she would just summon a book for him to read and recite it word for word. And it was amazing to see. Hey Thena, chirped the boy with a smile as he sat down next to his sister. A series of soft hooting from the side made Naruto smile, it was Glaucus, his sister's scared animal. And the first owl, hello to you too, Glaucus. Athena smiled and placed Naruto on her lap, why are you here? Naruto started to gently brush the back of his fingers against Glaucus' soft feathers. Dad told me to come tell you that I can't come to our usual lesson tomorrow. Athena raised an eyebrow and wondered what excuse her little brother had this time. Apparently April, ill 22nd is the date of the festival of Jupiter and Juno and they want to take me to see the Roman camp. Glaucus suddenly turned and pecked Naruto's hand before flying away. Ow, why do you do that? Athena closed her eyes, I see. The blonde looked confused and turned around on his sister's lap, what is it, Athena? Since he became the god of family Naruto could sometimes sense his family members' emotions. And he was slowly getting better at it. Is something wrong? I, I don't like the Romans, Naruto. Athena's power was slowly rising as her gray eyes looked incredibly intimidating. Why, I am Athena, the great Greek goddess and one of the most powerful Olympians, but when I become Minerva, I am merely a weak goddess. The Romans took my powers in warfare and gave it to others, like Bologna and Mars. Naruto frowned, but you are still stronger than them as Minerva, right? He had seen how Ares react to Athena he was always scared of her beating him into pulp. Athena shook her head, no, I was weak and resentful in that form. I hate being Minerva and as soon as the Roman Empire collapsed I had never willfully returned to that form. Sometimes, just like the others, I would turn into my Roman aspect. But I hate it every time. She hugged her brother closer and sighed. That's why I've never seen you as Minerva. Many of my children have tried to avenge me, but none of them have succeeded so far. Avenge you, they stole my statue, Naruto. Athena muttered darkly, the original Athena Parthenon in Athens was taken by the Romans when they conquered the Greek Isles. It made me weaker, it is the worst insult they could have possibly made towards me and I will never forget it. Did you take it back after Rome fell? No, Olympians aren't allowed to directly involve ourselves. So I send my children to get it for me, but none of them ever made it. Naruto crossed his arms, can I get it for you? Athena looked down at him with a small smile, I'm not an Olympian so I should be able to get it for you. And I've been to Rome with Nietzsche before so I can find my way around the city. You're a god, so the rules apply to you as well, albeit being not as strict. And wh, adds to way that you wouldn't become an Olympian yourself soon, you are the son of father and lady Hera, and that makes you entitled to a seat on the council even more than me. Athena giggled at Nauru, Chu's confused face and poked his forehead, and people have wanted to kick Ares or Dionysus off the council for a while already, so there is a high chance of you being promoted when you're fully grown. Naruto shrugged, maybe, but I don't really want it. Nietzsche keeps saying that going the meeting are really boring. Athena smiled, that's because Apollo is lazy, and you don't want to be lazy. Whatever, before then I can still help you or your children get your statue back. Naruto smiled and sat up taller on his sister's lap, I'm getting stronger every day, you know, and I can soon bless humans just like you. I can bless them with powers over the wind or lightning, just like dad can. Maybe, but not until you're older, little brother, said Athena with a smile as she kissed him lovingly on the forehead. You're still a little boy, so just focus on your studies for now. Naruto pouted, fine. The wisdom goddess lifted her brother into her arms as she stood up and walked out of her library. The boy was still small enough to fit comfortably in her arms and she couldn't help but smile when he wrapped his arms around her neck and snuggled into her. Athena felt closer to her little brother than perhaps everyone else in existence, including her own children. The little boy had easily made his way into her heart like no one else had before, he was her darling little brother and she loved him. The two godly siblings made their way to the temple's large dining hall and Athena placed Naruto down on one of the many marble chairs. The boy was still too short to reach the table with his height. But he hovered on the air to sit higher in his seat. Do you want anything to eat? Naruto grinned and shook his head, I got that covered. He clapped his hands together and a plate of chocolate chip cookies appeared in front of him, 
steaming hot and still soft at the center. Mommy taught me how to conjure up food, she says it's a part of being the god of family, cooking good home-cooked food. Naruto held up the plate for Athena, try some, Athena. Athena smiled and bit into the nugget center of the cookie, these are very good, they taste just like the ones Lady Hera and Aunt Hestia make. Yep, Artie said so too, chirped Naruto as he ate one of the cookies whole, she ate four plates before dinner and couldn't even eat what her hunters made for her after. Athena Law, D, it was just like Artemis to eat so many cookies. When you learn how to make shepherd's pie, Artemis will probably want you to live with her. Naruto giggled and nodded happily. You know, one of my daughters also loved these cookies. The goddess sighed with a soft smile, I secretly sent a batch to her for her sixth birthday last year. Naruto smiled, cool, so your daughter is my age. Yes, she was born a few weeks after you. Athena snapped her fingers and a holographic image appeared in front of them, her name is Annabeth Chase. Naruto looked closer at the image and saw a young girl, with golden blonde hair styled like princess curls sleeping peacefully on her bed. She looked very pretty and he smiled at the sight. She looks like you, Athena. Yes, she does, Athena replied proudly, and she's smart too. What's she like? She's still very young, like you, but she's not immortal so she still is different from you. She's almost seven years old and she already loves architecture and reading. I can tell that she will become a wonderful demi-goddess and a great warrior. Will she be going to camp half-blood? Athena sighed, only small monsters are attacking her now, so it should be fine. But as she gets older she would need training and will have to go to camp. Naruto frowned at the mention of monsters. He had seen some of them on his travels with Apollo some hellhounds, cyclops, several colchis bulls and even the Nemean lion, and all of them had fled the moment they sensed the presence of two gods. No monster would ever try to bother an Olympian, especially one as powerful as Apollo. But Naruto knew that demigods only had a fraction of their power and monsters wouldn't hesitate to attack them. It made him angry that a part of his family was being slot. Erd and they weren't doing anything to help them. So you'll have her family bring her to camp. Athena sighed, her family isn't being too useful right now. Naruto frowned as his sister continued. Her father married a woman and they birthed two sons together, and they are not paying enough attention to my daughter as they should. She is complaining about spiders in her bed and they don't believe her. The goddess knew full well that spiders will always go after her children, and she wanted to smite Frederick for ignoring her daughter's plea. And the woman is angry at Annabeth for attracting g monsters to her home and endangering her sons and annabeth clearly notices naruto crossed his arms can't we do something about it short of smiting them no this is why i wanted to become god of fatherhood i want to stop these bad fathers from hurting their children naruto felt angry and unknowingly gathered storm clouds above olympus why can't they see their mistakes when they are right in front of them it's different for demigods naruto Athena patted Naruto's head to sat his anger, the godly parent of demigods can't raise them, so they are always left in the hands of their mortal parent. In most cases these parents will feel burdened or troubled, having to raise the child on their own, especially since monsters will often come attack. But so what? Asked the blonde, they are their children. Aren't they? The goddess smiled, not everyone thinks like that, Naruto. Naruto huffed and shook his head, I don't like it. Well, as the god of fatherhood, maybe you can make it better. Athena smiled and kissed her brother's cheek, but before that, you should get some sleep. Father is going to bring you to Camp Jupiter tomorrow and you need to be fully rested. The boy smiled and nodded, okay. Good night, Athena, good night, little brother. Camp Jupiter wasn't as cool as Naruto expected it to be, perhaps it was because of what the Romans did to one of his favorite sisters. But he felt angry looking down at them. He hated seeing the angered and betrayed expression on Athena's face, it made him feel angry and sad as well. Naruto loved Athena and wanted to help her. He had half a mind to fly down to the camp and interrogate the leaders until they told him what the Romans did to the Athena Parthenon. Naru, are you okay? Asked Juno as she looked down at her baby, you look angry. Naruto gave his mother a smile, I'm fine, mommy, I'm just a little tired. Juno smiled and ruffled Naruto's hair, I told you to sleep earlier last night. She held D onto his hand and guided him back to where his father was, 
Come, we'll show you where everything is. Jupiter had conjured a large white cloud to use for the occasion. It was solidified and an impromptu pavilion was settled upon it. Many of the gods and goddesses were present and they all lounged on it. Lady Vesta had conjured a large hearth in the middle of the pavilion and she along with Ceres and Venus sat around it. Naruto sat down next to his father and sipped on a glass of nectar. Thena isn't coming today, right? Jupiter smiled sadly and shook his head. I don't think so, son. Minerva rarely attends any Roman festivals. She doesn't even like attending her own festivals. She doesn't like to be called Minerva, dad. Naruto frowned as he continued to sip on a drink that tasted like the ramen he had in Tokyo. Just call her Athena, that is her real name. Juno, having heard what her son said, smiled and patted his head. It was obvious that Athena had told Naruto about what the Romans had done to her. Knowing how loyal and loving her son was to the people he loved, Juno wasn't surprised at his sour disposition. Out of all his siblings, Athena was probably tied with Apollo and Artemis as Naruto's favorite. The queen hoped her son wasn't overly angry at the Romans, she didn't want to see a tornado destroy the camp on her festival. Naru, that's New Rome, said the queen a. S. She pointed to the small down below them. That's where the Roman demigods live after the complete their service at Camp Jupiter. It's a nice little community and it is model after the original Rome. Naruto smiled. That looks pretty cool, I guess. And there's your temple, said Juno excitedly. We had the Romans build it the year you were born. Your statue will be built when you are fully grown. But some people already pray there for good weather. The young god nodded. Yeah, I hear them sometimes. Naruto will never forget the first time he heard a prayer. It was a strange sensation th. Had made him a little stronger and he could hear the person's voice very clearly as if they were standing next to him, though he was still waiting for someone to pray to him regarding fatherhood or family. Then that is Camp Jupiter. The place where Roman demigods train to become a part of the legion. Jupiter nodded at his wife's words, yes, and it is different from Greek training. Roman training. G focuses on teamwork and formations instead of individual skill. Naruto nodded. I know, Thena taught me all of it. The other gods were all enjoying themselves as he looked down at the nostalgic sight. Ah, I do miss the Roman bathhouses, muttered Venus with an incredibly gorgeous smile. Apollo, dressed in a formal business suit, smiled and nodded at the goddess of love as he held a glass of nectar in his hand. Yes, those were quite nice at times though I think I miss the music the most. Naruto smiled at his favorite brother, it was a little weird to see Apollo in his Roman aspect sink. E he acted more calm and serious than usual. I'm rather indifferent, replied Diana as she stood next to her twin, Roman woods were not too different to the Greeks or even the Americans. I don't care for such simple leisure. Naruto frowned at the sight of Mars, by far his least favorite sibling. Even in his Roman form, who many found more tolerable and respectable, Naruto didn't like him. Th. E. Romans were disciplined and battle-hardened and that is all that matters. Naru, come over here. Naruto smiled at Diana and flew over to her. Hey, Artie. The goddess smiled and patted his head. Call me Diana when I'm in this form. Little brother. Okay. Anna. The huntress gave a small laugh as she held onto her brother's hand. Come sit with me over here. Naruto hadn't visited her hunting camp recently and she wanted to spend more time with her favorite sibling, the Romans are about to all pay tribute to your parents, they are all lined up at their temples with sacrifices and offerings. Naruto stared down at the formal looking people, they all look serious. The Romans are stricter than the Greeks, especially on these special occasions. It was a little boring for Naruto, so he just looked up at his sister. Do you want anything to eat, Anna? Diana's eyes sparkled as she licked her lips, I wouldn't say no to some cookies. Naruto giggled and clapped his hands together, mock. Ing a plateful of peanut butter cookies appear on his lap. He gladly held up the plate for his sister, who immediately grabbed one and wolfed it down. Naruto knew his mother was right, cooking for F.A. Miley and watching them enjoying the food felt good. Don't eat so much, Diana, or you'll get fat. The huntress rolled her eyes at Venus, whatever, Venus. The young prince smiled up at the lady who looked like a mixture of his mother. Athena and Artemis, do you want some, Venus? The goddess pouted, ah, don't you have a cute nickname for me? 
Naruto would usually call Aphrodite Dite, but he didn't have one for her Roman aspect. Venus smiled and kissed him on the cheek, it's fine if you call me Dite, my Greek and Roman aspects are identical, love is universal after all. Naruto nodded, so do you want some, Dite? Sure, exclaimed the most beautiful goddess before she bit into one of the heavenly cookies. Um, peanut butter, one of America's greatest accomplishments. She smiled and hugged the little god close as she kissed his forehead, I'm so glad there is one male god who can cook well, all your brothers can't cook a meal to save the world. The blonde giggled, mother and aunt Hestia taught me their magic. A mortal, strong, handsome, a family man, a guaranteed great father, and a wonderful chef. Listed the goddess as she sighed, you are going to be a very good catch when you are fully grown. Yep, Apollo patted his little brother's head and grabbed a cookie, you're going to be a real hit with the ladies when you're older, Naruto. Diana smacked her twin upside the head and glared at him. Stop trying to corrupt him. She turned to the goddess of love and glared at her harshly, and you keep your claws off my little brother. Venus pouted as Diana hugged Naruto protectively. Blocking him from the goddess, I'm not going to let you take advantage of his love for family. You're just saying that because Naruto might have a crush on Zoe. He doesn't have a crush on Zoe. He just thinks she's really pretty. Ah, but I'm prettier, right Naruto? Venus winked at the child, but was violently pushed back when Diana blasted her with a wave of power, her body flickering. Almost showing her godly form. Stay away, you pedophile. Naruto couldn't help but smile as he looked at his family bickering with each other. They weren't that different in their Roman forms. They were dressed more formally and their insults weren't as degrading, but they were basically the same. They may appear vastly different to demigods or humans, but to Naruto, they were still his family. He could feel the love they all had for him and it felt the same as when they were in their Greek aspects. He laughed as the bickering Olympians were all called over to Jupiter to receive his scolding, unfortunately for them. His father was even scarier as Jupiter. Hello. Naruto, the young prince looked behind him and saw his sister, his Roman sister. Bell, Naruto had only met the goddess Bologna a few times, but he loved her nonetheless. She was nothing like her twin, Mars. Bologna was sweet and charming, a little like Athena in her own right, besides her being the Roman war goddess. She taught Naruto briefly on how to use a shield to defend as well as attack the few times she visited their mother's temple, and Naruto would love her lessons. Bologna wasn't nearly as powerful as Athena, but as a sister. She treated Naruto with just as much respect. How are you doing? Asked the Roman goddess, still making Mars angry every day. Naruto chuckled, yep, yeah, so I heard. You are also the god of fatherhood and family now, Bologna stated as she crossed her blood-stained armor. Interesting choices, I didn't expect you to choose such sentimental domain given how powerful your other domains are. I love my family and I just want to make sure they're all happy. Naruto grinned and crossed his arms, it's nice to see everyone together and happy. You take after mother more than you do father. Yep, everyone had told Naruto how much he resembled his father, but he thought he was more like his mother. He inherited a part of both his parents' domains, but he enjo. Yet being the god of fatherhood and family more than the god of violent storms and the four winds. He fully agreed with his mother's belief of family and the sanctity of marriage, he would never play around with multiple women like his father did in the old days. You really love your family, Bologna said as she placed a hand on his shoulder, which is why I need your help, Naruto. The goddess suddenly frowned, which made Naruto worry, as the god of fatherhood, you are the only one who can help me right now. What is it, Bell? He could sense his sister's conflicting emotions as she struggled to tell him her problem. It's my daughter's. Bologna sighed and led her young brother to the side of the pavilion. They are having a lot of trouble with their father, and I can't help them without violating the rules. But since you are the god of fatherhood, you are well within your domain if you were to help them with their situation. Naruto nodded. Of course I'll help them. They are my nieces after all. Bologna looked relieved. Thank you. She knew she couldn't ask any of the Roman gods and she didn't really know their Greek aspects that well. When she heard about Naruto's new doma, in she knew he would be her only hope of helping her children. I owe you, little brother. Don't be silly, Belle, you're my sister. He smiled and laced his fingers behind his head, 
what are the girls' names? Hyla and Reina, located at the very edge of Olympus, the forge of Hephaestus stood proud and active. Waves of divine energy expelled from its gigantic chimneys. From the master bolt to Apollo's divine bow, all weapons on Olympus were repaired and maintained in the forge. Servants of Hephaestus would constantly mine celestial bronze, imperial gold, and divine silver from Mount Olympus and delivery the ores to their lord. As the most skilled son of Hera, the god of smiths armed the gods with the most advanced arsenal in existence. Didn't I tell you to not touch anything? The you, Ing god turned around at the gruff voice and grinned sheepishly at his older brother, trying but failing to hide the shattered piece of glass behind him. The only part of the beautifully crafted glass eagle still intact was the head. And it was lying quite inelegantly on the soot-stained ground of the forge of Olympus. Naruto couldn't help but cringe at the unsightly remains of his father's sacred animal and scratched the back of his head as his brother stared down at him. Sorry, Hefi, I didn't mean to break it. The god of smiths sighed and crossed his arms at his little brother, it's all right, I'll fix it later for father. He snapped his fingers and the broken glass vanished, teleported to his other forge. But more importantly, what are you doing here? Our lesson isn't until next week. And you're supposed to be learning from Apollo right now. Naruto grinned. Nichin is busy this today. He went to California to visit an old flame, whatever that means. Hephaestus groaned and palmed his face. That sunspot is such an idiot at times. That's what Artie says, replied Naruto with a giggle. The older son of Hera smiled down at his brother, so what are you doing here? Do you want to have your lesson now? The blonde clapped his hands together and stared up at his brother pleadingly, doing his puppy dog face that succeeded in convincing Athena to give him a golden spear. Can I please have the sword you made for me? The boy tugged on his brother's sleeve, I'm getting a little tired of training with my spear, so I want to try learning to use a sword. Naruto grinned sheepishly, please, Hefi Tilda. The smith god sighed before he chuckled, fine, just stop with that face. He ruffled his little brother's hair, follow me to the display room. Naruto jumped in joy and hugged his brother around the waist. Thank you, Hefi. Located right next to the soot-stained forges with great distinction was the display room, which was a misnomer if Athena had anything so say about it. It stood taller than the chimney of the forges and had a few dozen grand Greek columns supporting its meticulously chiseled roof, a grand family portrait of the Olympians showcased upon it. A wide row of stairs welcomed all gods and goddesses upon entry and it led into a large open room with long rows of showcases. Through transparent glass displays, hundreds of age-old weapons, shields and AR. More decorated the room as a hall of fame, and Hephaestus stood proudly in the middle of his greatest achievements. The smith god led his odd brother to the very back of the display room. A small disc, lay case that stood shorter than the rest was all that Naruto could see, and his grin grew brighter with each passing second. His brother had promised to forge him his own sword, and he had been waiting to see it for a long while. Athena had insisted that Naruto should complete his training with his spear and shield before starting his blades, but Hephaestus deemed Naruto ready. Wow, is this it? The elder son of Hera smiled, yes. All in this display case. Naruto's eyes gleamed at the shiny glass display, but he didn't see any swords. Placed simply on a small rack were two rings, one of them gold and one of them silver. Hephaestus snapped his fingers and the display opened, and Naruto grinned as his brother reached in for the rings. I made you two swords. Two, really? Asked the boy as he bounced up and down excitedly. Here, put the silver ring on your right thumb and the golden ring on your left. Naruto did as he was told and found that the rings were perfect fits, I designed. These rings to fit your hands as you grow, and they are designed to be simple to carry and able to hide in plain sight. Naruto grinned as he stared at his thumbs, they retract and expand on your command. All you have to do is send a surge of your power into each of them to activate them. The smith god smirked and crossed his arms proudly, give the silver ring a light surge of power. A surge of godly wind filled the silver ring, and it transformed instantly. It was a curved sword with a wide blade, about 5 inches wide. It was 24 inches in length, similar to a gladius, but th. The most amazing factor about it was that it was extremely thin, so thin that the blade was transparent. It illuminated a brilliant silvery white light and radiated power, it made Naruto shiver as he held it tightly in his hand. 
and it was very light, almost as weightless as a feather. The hilt was beautifully crafted and fit perfectly in Naruto's hand, shining godly silver. Hephaestus smiled, I named it blind, signifying its blinding speed and lethality. It is made purely out of divine silver, the rarest of the godly metals found on Mount Olympus. I forged it with my personal flames and compli. Ted it with the help of Apollo, we used the heat from his sun chariot to add the finishing touches. The blade itself is one micrometer thin one one thousandth of a millimeter. It is by far the lightest and sharpest blade I have ever made. It weighs less than one kilogram and can slice through most, if not all materials in existence, and if you channel your godly wind into the blade, it might actually be the sharpest blade in existence. Naruto was in awe as he twirled the blade around, feeling how perfectly balanced it was. But don't think it's fragile, after my folding with such extreme heat and powerful energy. It can withstand the strongest attack from the heaviest warhammer bluntly, so if you want to shave Ares' head, this is the sword to use. In the name of our father, Hefi, this is amazing. He looked up at his brother with utter adoration, you're awesome. The look from his little brother was worth all the hard work, now check out the other sword. Naruto smiled as bright as a pall, low as he channeled some power into the golden ring, filling it with godly lightning. But instead of near weightlessness like blind, this one was extremely heavy and he nearly dropped it. The god of th. E4 winds had to retract blind and use both hands to support the weight, but regardless, it was a sight to behold. It had a long hilt, at least a foot long, and it was a beautiful blend of gold and bronze. Then there was the blade, it was at least four feet long. It had no edge, it was a thorny blade that spiraled upward in a rounded fashion, and it ended at a sharp point that shone like a diamond. This is Storm Ruler. A double-handed sword made from the finest celestial bronze and imperial gold in my possession. It is the opposite of blind, it weighs 40 pounds and will become heavier as it grows to match your muscle mass. It's not nearly as powerful as father's master bolt, but I designed it to enhance your lightning and wind powers. Hephaestus ran his fingers over the thorny spirals of the blade and smiled. These rounded edges are designed to collect the power you channel into the hilt and amplify it exponentially. This sword can split the sky and light the night asunder with wind and lightning. Naruto's jaw dropped at the pure awesomeness of his new weapons, you will need to adjust between using such differently weighted blades. So I recommend you dedicate one hand to each sword. Your right hand is more controlled and defined, so you should dedicate it to blind. Storm Ruler requires much less physical control, so you can use your left, but you will need to train your physical strength in order to use it properly. Naruto transformed the blade back to its ring from, thank you so much, Hefi. He grinned and wrapped his arms around his full Icor brother's waist, you're the best big brother ever. Quote, the smith god silently taunted Apollo and Hermes, and hugged his brother back, anything for you, little brother. He patted his spiky blonde hair, why don't you go take them for a spin? The boy nodded excitedly, cool, I'll go right now. I love you, Hefi. With that, Naruto flew out of the display room, leaving a chuckling Hephaestus looking at the retreating ball of energy. The smith god smiled softly to himself, proud that he made his little brother so happy. Top that, Apollo and Hermes. Okay, I have to start the first step of my plan. The young god flew into the temple of Hermes, one of his favorite places to visit on Olympus. Over the years Naruto had gotten familiar with one of his closest brother's schedule, and since it was Sunday, H. His brother should be in his temple taking a short break. Soon the familiar sight of the giant Caduceus that served as a beacon of the Temple of Hermes, and Naruto briefly wondered what would happen if the giant snakes of the enlarged version of the Caduceus could come to life, a giant George and Martha would be funny to see. Ignoring the giant conveyor belt that ran from inside the temple, Naruto flew inside. He passed by rows of statues of Hermes, all dedicated to his popular brother from all thieves travelers, or even salesmen from every era, though it was a little weird that his brother E. Nded the line of statues of a mannequin wearing a flash costume. Hermie, still wearing his ops, Olympia Parcel Services, uniform, Hermes jolted up from his couch, looking around frantically. His saw, indeed blonde hair was still messy and was wearing a pillow head style, and his eyes looked so tired they made Naruto feel a little sleepy. The god of travelers finally noticed his little brother hovering. 
above him and gave him an exhausted wave before slumping back down on his couch. Come back in a few hours, Naru, muttered Hermes, big bro needs his rest. Naruto landed on the ground and started to shake his brother's arm, come on. Hermi, I need your help. Hermes groaned and covered his eyes with his other arm, please, this is serious. Bell came to me for help and I need you to help me so I can help her. The god started to snore and Naruto shook his arm harder, just give me half an hour, after all you can sleep as much as you want. Hermes groaned again and sat up on his couch, Naru, why don't you go ask Apollo to help you? Because I know you're better at traveling. Naruto grinned and hopped up and down as he patted his brother's knees, I need to go to, he paused to look down at a piece of paper Bologna gave him. San Juan, Puerto Rico. Naruto nodded after he confirmed he said the place's name correctly, I've already waited a few days and I really need to go there now. Why in Uncle Hades do you need to go to Puerto Rico? Hermes rubbed his eyes as he held down Naruto's shoulder with one hand, stopping his hopping. Bell has two daughters there that need help with their dad. And she asked me to go handle the situation. Naruto grinned proudly, this will be my first divine intervention. I'm the god of fatherhood and family, so this is fully inside my domain. He smiled at his brother. I know you're tired, but please help me out this one time. Naruto clapped his hands together and conjured a cup in his hands. Here, this is a drink mommy makes to drink when she's tired. Hermes chuckled at the dark roast and patted his brother's head, fine, Naru, I'll take you there. The god laughed as his brother hugged him around the neck and stood up, I have a package to take there tomorrow anyway. So I guess I'll just go there today. He groaned again as he stretched out the kinks in his back, he really shouldn't have drank so much with Apollo the night be. 4. Before he threw Naruto onto his shoulders, smiling as his kid brother laughed, to the ops mobile. Naruto had seen Hermes' delivery truck before, but he'd never been on it. It didn't go nearly as fast as Apollo's Saul, but it was still really cool for Naruto. In order to fool the mortals, Hermes had manipulated the mist and made ops appear as UPS, which was the original truck that spawned thousands in the mortal world. Naruto's brother operated nearly all postal services in the world and had total control over all of them. Have you been to that part of the world before? Naruto nodded, yes, Nichin brought me there for lunch last year, but we didn't really stay to look around. Hermes grinned, well, let big brother help you through this quest. Atlantis, Palace of Poseidon, Naruto, come sit down. Naruto waved at his mother as he stared up at a very large map that served as a gargantuan wall of his uncle's palace. It showed all major current in all bodies of water in the woe. RLD and showed, in real time, the conditions and placements of all things in water. The young god recognized several larger islands, like Great Britain and Japan, on the map and was fascinated at all the information the map provided. It showed the amount of marine life currently living around the islands, even sea monsters, and it showed the amount of mermen located in the area that served as scouts for his uncle. Hera sighed at her distracted son, oblivious to the fact that half of Naruto's presence was currently flying with Hermes in his delivery truck. She had brought her son to their U. Sewell Lady's afternoon tea, located under the sea instead of the main hearth, but the young god was too busy with staring at the map of Poseidon's domain. The queen couldn't help but wonder why her son found it so interesting. In the last ten times they visited Atlantis, Naruto just ignored the map. Amphitrite smiled at her nephew, what's Naruto looking at? Hera shrugged, I have no idea. Deem. Cher giggled at her little nephew as she poured more tea for herself, I don't know what he's looking at, but he sure makes pretty good cookies. She smiled at her older sister, who smiled and nodded, he almost makes it as good as you do. Sister. He sure does. Chirped a happy Artemis. I brought some back to my hunters last time and they devoured them. Someone lucky is going to grab him up as soon as he grows up. Muttered Aphrodite with a small smile, he's just the perfect package. Hera gave the goddess of love a look, but she continued, just think about it, he's going to be a powerful god given his domains and parentage. He's going to be quite the handsome hunk if he's anything like his brothers, he's the god of fatherhood and family, so he's guaranteed to be a great father and husband. She snacked on another cookie with a grin, and he's a great cook, too. Amphitrite sighed, if only his uncle is more like that. Demeter gave a small laugh, that's true, 
he will be quite the catch for some lucky girl out there. Quote, yes, my son is great, but you will not mess with his love life, Aphrodite. The love goddess scoffed, oh please, if he's anything like any other god, he won't need my help to get girls. Hera scowled, look at your other sons. Ares has different girls every day and even someone like Hephaestus would have several demigod children every other year. Aphrodite winked, believe me, every god eventually becomes like that. Artemis crossed her arms, not if I can do anything about it. The huntress was a little annoyed that Athena wasn't with them, the wis. Dom goddess would never visit Poseidon's palace. I'm going to make sure he doesn't turn into a pig like every other man. Hera nodded, good girl. Demeter winked at Artemis, maybe you should marry him. Artemis Tilda, Aphrodite almost choked in laughter as Demeter smirked, he's a great catch and if you're his wife, you can keep him attached to a short leash. Artemis looked devastated, what in Hades, Aunt Demeter? What, I think it's a great idea. Demeter looked over at her little sister, would you be against it, sis? Hera crossed her arms in thought, no, I would be quite for it. Artemis had always been one of the more tolerable stepdaughters of Hera, and the queen had appreciated the huntress, efforts to keep Naruto in line, so having her as her son's wife wouldn't be bad at all. Out of all the goddesses, I think you are the one most suitable for my boy. The huntress looked sick, this is just wrong. Hestia smiled warmly, I think you two would make a cute couple. Artemis looked at her favorite goddess in shock, I know you don't like men, but Naruto is going to be a great god. He will also be a great father, so he'll treat all your hunters very well. And I've already t taught him to make all your favorite foods, so he can cook for you every night. Aphrodite was in titters, oh this is so perfect. Artemis glared at everyone at the table, you are all being ridiculous. She crossed her arms and shook her head, I love Naruto, but only as a big sister. Just like I did with Zeus, said Hera slyly with a smirk. Believe me, that will start to change after a few centuries. The Queen of Atlantis giggled. Oh my, if you really do marry him, it'd be the biggest event of the last ten millennia. Amphitrite gave the goddess of the moon a smile, I can already see the wedding ceremony. All right, that's enough. Artemis was flaring her power, this topic is preposterous. I am not going to marry anyone. What are you talking about? The goddesses almost jumped out. Out of their bones as Naruto suddenly reached for a cookie from next to his mother, looking at his family with his big blue eyes as he munched on his snack. He looked up at Artemis, very intrigued, who are you going to marry, Artie? His mother and aunts all started to laugh while his sister scowled, making Naruto look around with a very confused expression on his face. What is it? Hera kissed Th. E top of her son's head and sat him down on her lap, were talking about Artemis and if she should marry someone. The other goddesses all smirked as Artemis sighed, what do you think? Do you think she should marry someone? Yeah, of course, replied Naruto with a quick nod, reaching for another cookie, everyone should get married and Artie is great. Aphrodite giggled and ruffled his hair, really? Yep, chirped the boy as he snapped his fingers to conjure a glass of milk, she's one of the coolest goddesses and her hunters are very fun. He smiled at his sister, who looked a little flustered, and she has very pretty hair. She's the only one with red hair. Demeter laughed, oh, you are so cute. She pinched his cheeks lightly, making him pout as he chewed his cookies. Amphitrite giggled happily, and he likes red hair. Hera smirked, so do you think Artemis would make a good wife for yo? The queen of Olympus was swiftly cut off as Artemis snatched Naruto from her arms and stood up. Her usual proud expression looked very different with so much ichor rushing to her face, giving her a golden hue. No matter how much she glared at the others, especially Hera and Aphrodite, she couldn't look threatening. All the others just continued to giggle and laugh at her expense, and Naruto just looked around confused. That's enough, Artemis grunted as she stomped her feet, you are all going too far. Naruto giggled at the laughter of the others, glad that no one was suspecting anything. I hope we stay here until after dinner, I'm going to need more time in Puerto Rico. As long. Gee as mommy doesn't notice anything about my powers, it should be okay. He looked at his sister, who was still holding him in her arms, but why is Artie looking so gold? Naruto grinned as he stared, out the windows and down at the gorgeous view of San Juan. 
The city was laid out like a small maze and he couldn't stop the excitement from bubbling up from his chest. This was the first time ever da. Chihi went out on his own without his mother or father knowing, and it felt pretty awesome. So let me get this straight, asked Hermes with one hat on the wheel, his truck flying through the air swiftly. Bologna asked you to help with her daughter with their father, who is suffering from some kind of post-traumatic stress. She's afraid that he will harm the girls and wants you to help them. The boy nodded as he kept staring out the window, yep, that's right. Hermes chuckled and rubbed his temples, do you even know what post-traumatic stress is? Well, Thena taught me it a while back, but I don't really understand it. Naruto shrugged, it's some sickness and I guess it is bad for our nieces. The god of thieves chuckled, Naruto, our nieces are probably older than you. Hyla is older than me, but Reina is one year younger than me. Bologna had given her brother a full description of her daughters, and Naruto had been looking forward to meeting them. Hermes sighed at his brother. What I mean want to ask is, do you even know how to handle the situation? He glanced at the boy, you're still a child, little bro. These situations are very hard to handle properly, even for full-grown gods. These mortals are very different from us and you've never really interacted with any of them, so this is much more complicated than you think. Naruto looked at his brother in thought, nodding at his words. These people are very fragile and weak and you have to be careful when interacting with them. A playful push from you will probably kill them. Naruto scratched the back of his head, so what should I do? In my experience, you have to be very subtle. Try to get to know the girls as friends before you try anything out of the ordinary. Hermes had to scratch his head, trying t. Oh not make it sound like he was teaching Naruto to pick up mortal women. In this case, try to find out if their father is going crazy and if he will actually harm them. If he does, I assume Bologna W. Old want you to bring them to Camp Jupiter. I can't bring them there myself, can I? Isn't that against the rules? Hermes nodded. Yes, but you can always conjure up a plane ticket for the two of them. I did that to help a couple of my kids a few years ago. The god shrugged, honestly, Bologna could do that on her own, but I guess our Roman selves are just much stricter. Okay, got it, well, we're here in San Juan. Hermes smiled at his little brother, where to go next, captain? Naruto grinned and rubbed his hands together, now I do a little trick mommy and auntie Hestia taught me. He closed his eyes and focused his energy, slowly slipping his consciousness into his domain of family. Instead of darkness, his closed eyes started to see shades of color in a vastness of black. Nauru, to could see a large shade of orange right next to him, the signature of his brother Hermes. This was the art of familial sensory, the ability that allowed Naruto, along with Hestia and Hera, to locate and pinpoint family members. Hermes was Naruto's half-brother so his color was very apparent and bright, someone like Hephaestus would appear in an even brighter color. And off to the distance, far below in the city, Naruto saw two shades of purple, indicating his relations to them, his nieces. Just drop me off somewhere down there, I can find my way to them, Hermi. Fine, but take this with you. Hermes gave his brother a small earbud and stuck it into his ear, Hef made this to communicate with me. It's a kind of phone. Just tap your ear once and it will automatically contact me, so if you need any help. But give me a call. Naruto opened the door with a grin, okay, thanks, Hermi. With that, the young god jumped from the car and flew down into the city. Hermes sighed and couldn't help but chuckle. In the name of order and chaos, don't let him embarrass himself. It had been eons since the god had witnessed a young god's first divine intervention, especially one he actually cared about. In all honesty, he was very glad that he got to witness Naruto's first mission down in the mortal world. Knock, knock, what is Hades? cried Hermes as he jolted, glaring at the passenger side window. He groaned at the laughter of his older brother, giving him the finger as he opened the door and sat down next to him. You almost scared me to Tartarus, Apollo. The sun god was still laughing, oh, that was awesome. He wiped some tears away and shook his head you're still as squeamish as ever, Herm. What are you doing here? Asked the younger god, I'm in the middle of something here. Apollo scoffed, you think I would miss out on Lil Bro's first time. The sun god grinned and looked down from the window, I've foreseen this day for weeks and I planned my schedule around it. 
It's a good thing I went to visit Gretchen earlier today, if I wasted any more time I wouldn't have gotten the fifth round in. Only five rounds. Hermes scoffed, you're getting dull, brother. You shouldn't talk. Fastest god on Olympus. The sun god chuckled at his fuming brother, I'm impressed at your delivery speed and all, but some packages should take a little more time. Deliver I. T too soon and you drive down your customer satisfaction. Hermes shook his head, you're a mean brother, you know that. Apollo chuckled, I love you, too, bro. The messenger god was still shaking his head, with all my hate, Apollo. Can the two of you shut up? Apollo and Hermes were shocked to see the navigator attached to the windshield sudden morph into a computer monitor, revealing their brother's face. I'm trying to keep track of where Naruto is, so be quiet. Hermes grunted, you hacked my car again, hef. Oh don't whine about it, I'm just trying to keep an eye of that little troublemaker. Hephaestus was tinkering with some gadget as he looked into the screen, I'm tracking the earbud you gave him and my satellite is zooming down on it. Apollo grinned, good, now you and Herm can see what's happening. He crossed his arms with a smirk, not all of us are all seeing, after all. Oh, shut up, snapped the two other sons of Zeus. Naruto smiled at the beauty of San Juan, enjoying the sight of streets paved with grey bricks and lined with houses with bright blue and yellow walls. Not unlike Olympus, there were many people walking around, though none of them had the usual godly auras. And instead of nectar and ambrosia, Naruto caught scents of amazing foods, ones he hadn't tried before. He could already tell that Artie would enjoy some of the local cuisine and planned to learn to make them for her. Okay, where are the girls? He closed his eyes and the shades of purple appeared again. He was much closer than he had thought and landed on the nearest rooftop. The white sandy tiles felt warm through his shoes and the black railings were hot on his hands, but he didn't really care. He looked down from the roof and found himself looking at a restaurant named El Hiberito. It looked very nice with a coat of bright turquoise paint with white edged arches as the welcoming. But his attention was mainly focused on the back gate, where two girls were peeking through. The one of the left was much taller than the other, clearly Hyla. From where he was, Naruto noticed that she looked a lot like Bologna, they had the same black hair and piercing black eyes. The S. Hoarder girl, Reina, looked a lot like her sister and mother, though she had softer features and looked very pretty with her bright and giddy smile. They were both hunched down and were trying to reach for something behind the gate. But Naruto couldn't see what it was. But suddenly, Naruto saw something that made him shiver. It was a very large hound, a hellhound. It was the size of a semi-truck, and was slowly sniffing as it stomped its way through the street. It clearly caught the scent of the two demi-goddesses and decided to have them as an afternoon snack. Naruto had never seen a hellhound before, though he had read that his uncle Hades controlled them. But no matter, if it wanted to harm his nieces, he wasn't going to let it live. Naruto grinned, let's take blind for a spin. The yo. Ung God increased his deeply suppressed power a little and summoned Blind, marveling at its beauty and magnificence with a smirk. Excited, he jumped from the roof and lowered himself directly in front of the hound. The dog stared right at him for a second, but soon it started to shake and back away in fear, finally noticing the presence of a powerful god. It was far too slow and late, and Naruto was already above him with Blind raised. The god of fatherhood harnessed a small hint of his wind powers into the blade and slashed down, seeing the blade slice vertically through the hound. Hephaestus was not joking at all. Through the entire attack, Naruto never even felt his blade make contact with the monster. Soon the hound stopped shaking and was split open in half, each of his sides falling to the ground. But to Naruto's ever shock, his simple slash not only penetrated the skin of the hound, but also the street. There was a large scar upon the grey paved road, stretching to the very end of the street. He was glad no one was walking in the middle of the street, otherwise they would have been sliced in half. Wow, I love you, Hefi. Naruto grinned at his shiny blade as he landed on the ground. The hound dissolving into a pile of golden dust. But then he felt some eyes on him. He looked to the side and his electric blue met two pairs of piercing black. Um, hello there, Hyla and. Reina were staring at the boy and the blade in his hand in shock. Apollo was laughing his ass off in the ops truck. The look on his brother's face was priceless and he was so happy they recorded all of it with Hephaestus, satellite. 
He had a feeling that it would make a brilliance home video in a few years when Naruto was older. Hermes palmed his face and groaned, way to be subtle, Naruto. Hephaestus shrugged, at least blind works very well. The sun god was still chuckling at the sight of his brother and the two gawking girls, this is going to be a classic home video. On occasion, when he had nothing else to do, Naruto would listen in on his brother's conversations. They were usually pretty boring since the boy didn't understand what the older gods were saying, but sometimes he would catch some odd phrases or lessons. From Hermes, Naruto learned that it is easier to ask for forgiveness than permission, from Apollo he learned that if something doesn't fit, never force it, and fro. M. Hephaestus he learned that mortal women were like mechanical problems, nothing some grease won't fix. But so far, none of those lessons had proved useful or even remotely correct. Stop following us, ordered the older daughter of Bologna with near-perfect English. Please, listen to me. Naruto had his hands up and looked as innocent as possible, your mother sent me here to help you. Hyla threw a rock at Naruto, but a gust of wind blew it to the side. I said stay away from us. Come on, Reina, let's go. The older girl held onto her little sister's hand and pulled her away, not noticing Reina staring at Naruto. And don't you dare follow us. As the girls disappeared into the alleyways, Naruto sighed and scratched the back of his head. He didn't expect the girls to be afraid of him, no one had been afraid of him before. As the god of family and fatherhood, many lesser gods and goddesses had mentioned that he radiated the same warmth and loving aura as his aunt Hestia, so he ray. LLY had no idea why Hyla and Reina kept running away from him. Give them some time, Naru, spoke Hermes through the earpiece, they saw you slice up that hellhound close up, so they're probably scared of you. Not many humans or demigods will ever see something like that, especially when you tear up the street. Naruto looked at the large and stretching scar on the pavement and sighed again, but don't worry. You'll get through to them sooner or later. Okay, Hermie. Brushing the dust of his clothes, the god stretched his arms from side to side, I'll just trail them and see where they live. If there's any danger from monsters or from their father, at least I can be there to stop it. Okay, Lil, bro. Hermes ignored Apollo's grunt at him for using the sun god's usual nickname for Naruto, we're here if you need help. All right, the boy muttered as he took off to the sky, his eyes locked onto his two nieces down below. Let's see where they're going. Unknown to the sons of Zeus, their wise sister had been monitoring everything since Naruto first arrived in Hephaestus, Forge. Much like she did with her children, Athena placed a small symbol on Naruto so she could track him down. And no matter where he was in the world, to protect him, of course. She wouldn't usually watch where her baby brother was going every day, it was more a safety measure, but once she noticed that Nerut. Oh split half of his essence first thing in the morning, she'd known something was amiss. But even with Athena's unlimited intellect, she was still surprised when she found out about where her brother was going. That Roman wench, cursed Athena inwardly as she flickered with anger. How dare she send my brother to do her errands? It had been a long time, but Athena was seriously considering paying. G. Bologna a visit and teaching her a lesson. That third-rate war goddess couldn't even hold a candle in her presence, let alone order her brother to do her bidding in her witness. It shouldn't be Nauru, Chu's problem if her daughters were having problems, even if he was the god of fatherhood. If Naruto had to bend the rules to help a sister, it should be to help her and not the traitorous Roman shrew. Hey, Athena, the goddess of wisdom calmed herself instantly and removed her glasses, her means of monitoring everything that mattered, and turned to see the other goddesses returning from Poseidon's palace. She had almost forgotten that she was sitting by the main hearth and had been waiting for the others to come back, so she shoved the thoughts of Bologna away, she could teach her a lesson at any time. Good afternoon, she replied, perfectly calm. How was your day? Demeter giggled along with Hestia both sitting down around the hearth. Hera, with Naruto in her arms, smiled at her sisters. All of them looking back at Artemis, who was busy and glaring at Aphrodite as she whispered something into her ear. Athena arched her brows with intrigue and looked at her sister, who was still tinted with a golden hue. She also noticed some looks all the other goddesses were looking at Artemis and sometimes grinning at Naruto. What's going on? Demeter giggled again, Nothing much, we're just discussing something really cute. 
Naruto jumped out of his mother's arms and smiled at Athena, Hey Athena. The goddess of wisdom smiled at her brother, not feeling a hint of anger at the boy for helping the Roman. Naruto. Perhaps it was the boy's innocence, but she couldn't see a hint of nervousness in his eyes. Naruto wasn't a good liar if his excuses of trying to escape class were of any indication. Athena safely deduced that it was because her brother felt righteous at his personal mission to help Bologna. Oh, how that annoyed Athena to no end. Did you have fun today? The boy's grin widened. Yep. I didn't get to see Triton or Uncle Poseidon, though. They were busy doing something. Athena almost scoffed. Her brother's opinion of the barnacle beard was highly overrated. Oh. Oh. Naruto hopped up and down in remembrance, what does betrothed mean? Hera and the others giggled as Athena arched a brow, Mommy and Auntie Demeter keep saying it and they won't tell me what it means. Hestia patted Naruto's head after she giggled at Artemis' golden face, you'll understand when you're older, Naruto. Athena seemed to connect the dots, yes, it is not a word you need concern yourself with, little brother. She glanced at Artemis, who looked very uncomfortable, although I must say, I didn't expect to see it used under such circumstances. Hera smirked. You've had a long day, Naruto, go take a bath. Dinner is in a little while. Naruto pouted at his mother. Fine, don't tell me. I'll just ask Nichen later. With that, the wind god flew back to his parents' temple, his pout not leaving his face. So, started Athena as Naruto left earshot. Anything you want to tell me, Artemis? No, replied Artemis sternly a little annoyed that her favorite sister caught on so quickly. And enough of this already. Yes, I love Naruto, but as a sister. No, I will not come to love him romantically, I do not plan to love anyone romantically. You can't plan to love someone, Artemis. Aphrodite shook her head at the immature goddess, love is perhaps the most spontaneous and irrational emotion. It preys on the unknowing and forbidden. And it cannot be controlled, especia. LLYU since you've never experienced anything remotely close to love. Artemis frowned as the love goddess scoffed at the thought of the huntress thinking what she had with Orion was love, that wasn't even close. Trust me, I am not lying, Hestia sighed, we're only teasing you, Artemis. But as a fellow virgin goddess, I must say that I would not be against you forsaking your vow. Demeter nodded along with her sister. Unlike Athena and myself, your reasons for becoming a virgin goddess may be a little premature. Not all men are bad or will take advantage of women, and if the opportunity presents itself to you, I would encourage you to take it. Artemis looked up at her favorite aunt, who was smiling warmly at her. I'm not saying Naruto specifically, I just want you to give it a thought. Who knows, maybe the goddess of childbirth and maidens will want a family of her own, maybe a husband and perhaps a little daughter. I have often wondered about you, sister. Athena was quite surprised at how deep Hestia felt about Artemis and her words made the wisdom goddess want to add in. I don't marry because I don't feel any need for romantic bonding. And since I can have children through the meeting of the minds, I don't have a problem. But you've always had very strong maternal instincts, your hunters are clear indications. Artemis turned away, still flushed. I think if you find the right man, you will be very happy. Wow, this sure turned serious very quickly, muttered Demeter as she played with her dress. Yes, but I totally agree. Aphrodite smiled sweetly at her rival, Artemis. I know you don't believe in falling in love or any girly stuff that you think I love, but you do want to be happy, don't you? We're immortals, and I don't need to tell you how boring it can become after thousands of years. Don't you think starting something new and fresh may liven up your life a bit? I'm sure you won't like playing around with some men like I do, but finding one see you. Tay guy to have a relationship with wouldn't be so bad. Aphrodite winked at her, and don't worry about your hunters. They all don't like men because they've all met bad men, the scum of the earth. W. Air all sure that Naruto would never become like that. Hera smiled and nodded, my son will be faithful to his wife, I can guarantee it. Artemis sighed, I understand what you're all saying, but why? Oh you have to understand that I don't love Naruto that way. He's my little brother, not a potential lover. She shook her head as she looked over at Hera, I know it happened for you and dad, but it's not going to happen to Naruto and me. Aphrodite smirked, we'll just have to wait and see, don't we? 
Do you want some ambrosias or nectar, Nauru? The young god shook his head and pressed a finger against the earbud. No thanks, Hermi. I'm not hungry yet. It had been three hours since Naruto had followed the girls to their home, and he had spent the whole time sitting on their roof. You guys don't have to be here, you know. I know how to fly back home later. Fine, we need to get ready for our jobs anyway. Be sure to keep the earbud on and call us if you need any help. Yeah, interrupted Apollo. Remember, even though Hermes is the god of speed, I am the god of light and I can still run faster than him. So if you need help, I'm the big bro you call. Hermes gave his brother a dry look and shook his head. And make sure to not stay out too late. If Lady Hera finds out, you'll never be able to sneak out again. Naruto smiled at his sunny brother's words, I know, Nichen. I'll be back before Artie's chariot leaves. He looked up at the sky and winked, thank you for coming with me, guys. You're welcome, lil, bro. Hermes smiled at his baby brother as he started his engine, Tay. LL me if anything good happens to you and the girls. Apollo snickered at the wording, actually hoping for something. See you at home. Naruto had to admit that divine intervention was much more boring than he had thought. He heard all the stories about the Trojan War and how his siblings manipulated each side of the war. From Artemis ceasing the winds to halt the Greek fleets, to Athena planting. The idea of the Trojan horse into Odysseus, mind, to Apollo guiding Paris's arrow to pierce Achilles' heel, they were all so exciting and intricate. Naruto wasn't hoping for wars or anything like that, but he did expect more than sitting on a roof alone. This sucks, grunted the god inwardly as he played with some sparks in his hands. He snapped his fingers and sent a discharge into the air as a small torrent of wind lifted up some dried leaves. They contorted around his hands and danced around each other like a ballet. The god grunted in annoyance and pushed his arms up, sending the leaves up into the sky. Lying on his back against the red tiles, Naruto waved his hands from side to side, making the clouds above sway to his movements. It was fun to see the puffy white clouds move around and break down into smaller clouds. How are you doing that? The sudden voice startled Naruto and he jolted up in surprise, causing him to blast the clouds away leaving a clear blue and orange sky. H huh, he looked to his side and grew more surprised at little Reina looking at him. The girl, already in her pajamas, skillfully maneuvered herself on the steep red tiles and sat down next to the god who was her age. How did you get up here? Reina tilted her head to the side, this is my spot. There is a loose tile above my room and I usually climb up here to look at the sky. She smiled giddily but I've never seen the clouds move like that before. How did you do that? Well, I have some powers over wind and I use it sometimes to have fun. He smiled at the girl, check this out. The god swirled his hands around as he looked up at the sky, and Reina watched in amazement as the clouds churned like a vortex in the sky, bathed in blue and orange. Wow, that's so cool. Naruto smiled at the girl's excitement, but looked around to see if Hyla was around. Are you allowed to come out here? I thought your sister told you to stay away from me. Reina looked sheepish and scratched her cheek. She did, but it's fine. I don't think you're dangerous. She smiled at the boy who was barely taller than her. You're a kid, just like me. How dangerous can you be? The Roman demigoddess Lo, octophily relaxed and leaned back to stare up at the sky, and you saved us from that weird dog, didn't you? Well, muttered the blonde as he scratched the back of his head. How much of that did you really see? I didn't really see anything. Reina giggled and shrugged. I was looking at the dog and a second later, it turned into a pile of dust. The god chuckled and was a little relieved. Hyla was really scared, though. She kept muttering something I couldn't understand and kept pulling me away. I wanted to see how you managed to turn the monster to dust. She turned to Naruto with gleaming eyes. So how did you do it? I think you're still too young to know. Hey cried the girl loudly, you look the same age as me. You might be a little shorter than me too. No, I'm not. Naruto almost pouted. He hated being called short. I am half an inch taller than you. And I may not look like it, but I am still older than you and know things that you shouldn't know for a long while. Reina pouted, you're mean. Don't be such a child, scolded the god as he poked the girl on the forehead. You poked me, the girl muttered angrily. I hate it when people poke me. Well, then why? Oh you shish, 
Naruto was cut off as Reina poked him back and added an extra flick to the forehead. Hey, Reina stuck her tongue out at Naruto and grinned, that's what you get. It doesn't feel so good, does it? Reina, called out a sudden voice that made the girl jump in shock. What are you doing out here with him? The young god looked behind Reina and saw Hyla stepping onto the roof, towering over her sister with her arms crossed. For such a young girl, she looked oddly intimidating and very much like Bologna. Unlike Reina, she didn't have that childish flair or spark of innocence that children her age should have. As the god of fatherhood, Naruto couldn't help but wonder how exactly had Hyla's life been like. In retrospect, now that he had calmed from his excitement at the prospect of his first divine intervention, for Bologna to ask him such a favor, the girls must be in a serious situation. Reina almost whimpered, and nothing. We were just talking. Didn't I tell you to stay away from him? Hyla glared at her sister and shook her head, now come back inside. No, I don't want to, Reina whispered with a frown, let's just stay out here, he's not out here. The elder sister bit her lower lip, he's locked himself inside the den again, so don't worry about him. Are you talking about your dad? Asked Naruto, but nearly flinched when Hyla sent him a scathing glare. It is, isn't it? There is something wrong with you dad. Reina looked back at Naruto and managed a small nod before Hyla pulled her close, I know, I can sense these things. He stood tall and stepped a little closer to the sisters. Trust me, Hyla, your mother sent me here to help the two of you. Bologna sent you here, asked Hyla as Reina looked confused. You know about your mom. Reina looked, Ed hopeful and stared up at her sister with her big round eyes, making Hyla turn away. Yes, my father told me about her last year. But it doesn't matter, I don't care anymore, it's not as if she helped us when we really needed it. Naruto caught sight of some scars along Hyla's arms and shoulder from the sleeveless she was wearing, and they looked like claw marks from some sort of monster. Just leave us alone, Naruto's eyes softened, you don't have to sew this alone. His voice instantly made Reina feel warm and cozy, Bologna is my sister, he said, making Hyla's eyes widen in shock and step back. That means you two are my nieces. She may not have been here for you, but I can say that she loves the two of you. She sent me here to help you because she wants you to be safe and happy. Reina tugged on her sister's hand. Maybe we should listen to him, Heil. Some rumbling could be heard inside the house and made Hyla tense up. Fine, but let's talk somewhere else. Naruto nodded, before his eyes trailed down to the house. If he ever found out that his niece's father hurt them he might try his hand at smiting. On Mount Olympus, the other half of Naruto's essence struggled to enter Morpheus' domain. Until he merged back with his other half, he would have no idea what was happening to the girls in Puerto Rico. It had been bothering him all day. Even when he was in Atlantis, he kept staring at the water maps, trying to find where Puerto Rico is. If the location he found on the map was correct, and if his other half managed to convince Hermes to take him there, it would t ache no longer than a few seconds to get there. If it was taking so long, his other half must have found the girls and something must be going on. Oh, this is so frustrating. A series of knocking on. His door broke the god out of his stupor. He sat up on his bed, the silk sheets feeling slippery against his silk pajamas, and rubbed his eyes. His room, which was around the size of one of those basque, Ed Ball Quartz his Nietzsche had taken him to, was still dark and the only light came from Artie's chariot that was reaching the peak of its nightly journey and the yellow light behind his closed door. Come in, he said, wondering if his mother had found him out. Still awake, I see. Naruto was surprised to see Athena walk into his room, her black hair loose and cascading down her back. Is something keeping you up? What are you doing here so late, Athena? Asked the boy as he swung his legs to the side of his bed, turning to face his sister. Even in the dark, Athena seemed to glow with radiant. E and her gray eyes sparkled like small diamonds. Normally, Naruto would have thought his sister looked very pretty, but tonight she felt a little scary. She had the same expression as when she found out Hermes helped him cheat on his homework or when she caught him replacing Ares' shampoo with Aphrodite's perfume, making the god of war smell like a flower garden for weeks. Athena raised an eyebrow and looked down at her brother. I taught you how to reason out a situation. I think you know why I'm here. 
she gave Naruto a pointed stare that was known to make people lose control of their bladders. Why did you split half of your essence and send it to Puerto Rico? Naruto's mind immediately tried to recall all the lying techniques he overheard Hermes and Apollo discussing and how they had guaranteed each other that they'd work on anyone in any situation. Um, I was chasing a piece of tail and lost track of time. Athena's eyes twitched and failed to give a response, making Naruto even more nervous. I was fanning an old flame, but they don't mean anything to me. The young god scratched his head and tried to remember what else his brothers had said, ooh, I I went out with the guys. I am going to castrate you, Apollo. The boy sighed and reached for Athena's hand, I'm sorry, Athena. I went to help two of my nieces, they are in trouble with their father and something really bad might happen if I don't help. Athena didn't relent and kept staring down at Naruto, and they are Belle's daughters. The goddess of wisdom grunted at Naruto's nickname for the Roman wench. You are indeed the god of fatherhood, but it is still against the rules to directly interact with demigods. Don't be mad at me, Athena, whispered Naruto with a pout. Please, Athena sighed and sat down next to her baby brother. I'm not mad at you, Naru, but why are you helping Bologna? Her Roman sister had already taken her title from her and her believers had taken her statue. Athena would soon, er destroy Bologna than to let her squirm into her little brother's heart. You shouldn't help her, she's a traitorous, pathetic goddess. Naruto frowned, she's my sister too, Athena. The goddess of, wisdom couldn't help but feel a sting of pain in her heart at his words and looked away, I'm helping her because I care for my family and I don't want to see any of them get hurt, that includes the demigods and demigoddess down in the human world. My helping Bologna doesn't mean that I like her over you, Thena. The boy had his head down and pulled on his sister's sleeve, you and Artie are my favorite sisters, you know that. I love you, Thena. The daughter of Zeus relented and ruffled Naruto's hair, I know, she said before she pulled the boy into a hug, kissing his head. I love you too, Naru. Naruto sensed something in his sister, something he felt when he spoke with Bologna. Is something wrong, Thena? His electric blue eyes sometimes extracted answers better than Athena's dark gray, is it one of your children? I can sense something wrong. After a brief silence, Athena nodded. It's Annabeth. She's run away from home. What? The goddess sighed. She's gotten tired of her. Family ignoring her problems and in some cases blaming her for things that are not her fault. Athena's eyes flickered with power as she thought about Annabeth's father and stepmother, damn those two mortals to Hades. I have a half a mind to smite that woman for treating my daughter this way. Naruto frowned and patted his sister's shoulder, Annabeth is only seven years old. Even with my guidance, she'd never make it to camp half-blood without any prior training. I'll go help her. Naruto stood and smiled at his sister, I'm already helping Reina and Hyla anyway. If I'm going to break the rules, might as well break them at the same time. The boy had thought about asking his father for permission, but just as his brothers said, it was easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. Anne, Nabeth is my niece and the daughter of one of my two favorite sisters, so I have to help her. Athena was disgusted by her own hypocrisy, but she loved Annabeth. Thank you, Naruto. I'll help you along the way. Naruto grinned and pecked Athena on the cheek. No problem, sis. So, started Hyla as she stared at Naruto, you're a god. Naruto cringed at the uncensored question and the head that turned because of it. While he understood Hyla's reasoning to not have this conversation within her father's earshot, talking about being a god right in the middle of a park wasn't much better. The e. Venning wind may have left the park scarce of people, but the common commuters around the streets could still hear them, especially if Hyla continued to speak so loudly. Naruto hushed her, not so loud, please. Reina tilted her head, you're our uncle, she arched her brows, you're no older than me. The god sighed, I told you, gods have to grow up too. But that's not important, he looked at Hyla, who still appeared apprehensive. Tell me what is going on with your father. And so the tale began. According to Hyla, her father hadn't always been like this. In her earliest memories, he was kind, warm and loving and everything she wanted in a father. But as the years went by and her father came back from the Iraq war, he developed post-traumatic stress disorder and became increasingly paranoid. He bought weapons of all kinds from around the world. Their home, instead of normal furniture, 
was filled with guns of all shapes and sizes and all sorts of swords and spears made with different types of special metals. Even after Reina was born, her father didn't change, instead, he was even worse. He started to lock Hyla and Reina into their room to protect them against his enemies. He didn't work and spent all his money on his weapons. He didn't eat and didn't feed his daughters. And recently, he was even starting to think his daughters were trying to harm him. Reina had tears we ling in her eyes as she hugged her big sister's arm, he scares me a lot. Hyla held Reina close and sighed, he told me about mother last year. He says that we should have powers and we need to learn how to use them. So recently, he's been teaching me how to use his weapons. But he's getting worse, I can tell. Naruto scooted closer to his nieces, did he ever hurt you? No, replied Hyla with a frown. His weapons actually saved us against some monsters. This dog still clawed me on the arm, but I managed to kill it with one of dad's swords. She bit her lip and fought to remain tough, his teachings actually saved us. But eventually, he'd snap. That I know for sure. If you want, I can bring the two of you to a safe place right now. The girls looked up at Naruto, it's far away from this place. It's a camp designed for people like you. There you will train to control and hone the powers you received from your mother. And I can guarantee that you will be safe there. Hyla looked intrigued, but Reina spoke up. What about dad? She stared at Naruto. We can't just leave him here. You're a god, right? Can't you just heal my dad? Naruto looked sheepish and scratched the back of his head. Well, no. My brother Apollo is the god of healing and medicine, so he probably can, but this is kind of against the rules. Your mother can't directly associate with you without breaking the ancient laws. And I can only technically do this, so there's no way I can get Nietzsche to do this. Reina tugged on her sister's sleeve, we can't leave dad here. Hyla pursed her lips and gave a nod, one that Naruto saw as forced. We'll stay here for now, but we have to leave if this gets worse. Above all, I have to protect you, Rei. Here, take this. Naruto snapped his fingers and conjured two small hair clips. These are charmed and when you wear them, you will be able to communicate with me. I will look over the situation, but if I'm not actually, contact me and I will come here right away. Hyla bit her lip. T thank you. Yeah, chirped Reina with a grin. You're cool, Uncle Naruto. The boy smiled and patted Reina's head. Now, let me make you something to eat. The end now we will see you in the next video.